Right, we are here, we are live. Hello everybody, thank you very much for joining in. Some slight technical difficulties, so we're a few minutes late. YouTube decided to change its interface on me. Um, yes, so thank you to everybody for tuning in live and hello to everybody who is watching afterwards. Tonight, I'm going to be playing through Sanctuary, The Keeper's Era. This is a prototype copy of the game um, that I've been sent and it is a dueling one-on-one uh, -on -one mage summoning creature uh, kind of a little bit like one of those lane games. There's four lanes in the game and your objective is to basically defeat all of your opponent's sanctuaries. We're going to be playing three games tonight. Ricky's going to be joining us in a minute um, because the game comes with uh, six decks. It's on Kickstarter right now. There are six decks which I have in front of me here. Rick has three of them. I have three of them and we're going to be doing three games tonight, each of them using a different deck. Now, with the current crisis that's going on around the world, Ricky's not here. Uh, what we've done is Rick is at home. We're going to be talking to him on Skype. He has got physical copies of the three decks he's playing. And basically what's going to happen is he's going to be shuffling his cards. He's going to be drawing the cards from his deck and he's going to be telling me what it is that we're playing. I think that's how it's going to work. OK, so yeah, thank you to everybody for joining me in the chat. And we're going to now switch over to the overhead camera, which should be this one. Yes, it is. Right. Uh, I just need to make the YouTube chat a little bit smaller because it's a bit big. Um, but yeah, I assume everybody can hear and see us okay. Rick, do you want to say hello? Hello. Nice there to you see go. everybody. So that is working. Uh, we are broadcasting on YouTube and Twitch. I've recently joined Twitch. So my Twitch channel is fairly quiet because I literally set it up yesterday and I haven't really advertised it much. But you'll see on the left hand side of your screen, there are two chat windows. One of them is for YouTube, one of them is for Twitch. There is about a 20 odd second delay on the YouTube feed. So anything that you put in the YouTube chat, uh, we won't see it for a while. But the Twitch chat, if anybody's watching on Twitch, please can you put some messages in there to let me know that the Twitch chat is working because the Twitch chat has about six seconds of delay and that's a lot, uh, a lot better. Uh, I have asked the publishers to join in tonight uh, just in case we make any rules mistakes along the way. Both me and Rick have played it. We've read the rule book a few times, but just in case we make any rules mistakes, I'd like them here to pick up, to pick up on that so that they can correct us. Um, but yeah, Twitch chat is currently blank. So I'm not sure if it is working or not. It is authorized. I can see some historic one before we went live, I think. Right. Okay. So nothing seems to be appearing in the Twitch chat, which is a shame. Ah, there it is. Right. Twitch is working. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Right. So the Twitch chat is working. Um, right. Matt is here. Excellent. Thank you, Matt, for joining in. Um, let's get rid of that. OK, so, yeah, we're live on Twitch. We're live on YouTube uh, and off we go. So, as I mentioned, there are six decks included in the game. The first game we're going to play today is I am going to play Mulran and Rick is going to play Crass. Now, these are the two decks that we used in our test game this afternoon. So both me and Rick are now experts with this. And I'll tell you why. There we go. Uh, and yes, I can read you. Excellent. Right. So now I just had to plug in my headphones. Unfortunately, the last time I did that, everything crashed. <laughs> but hopefully we're still going out live. Yeah, are the chat flickered, live? but... Yeah, all of the chats flickered. Uh and the Twitch chat has gone. There you go. Right. So, yes, the Twitch chat seems to disappear fairly quickly. But yes, I saw your message. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, the publishers in the Twitch chat. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to be playing Mulran first. Ricky's going to be playing Crass. These are decks that we've played before. The second game, which is the second game we're going to play, Rick? What, the next game? The middling ones, we thought, didn't we? Yeah. So it was Th Thanon and... Ganto. Ganto, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third game we're going to play tonight is Antar against Wool. Um, because the publisher of Tabula Games has told me um, that there are the, these decks are balanced against each other, but there are different difficulty levels. So these two are, I think, relatively easy to play. I think it's uh, Thanon and Moltran are the easy ones. OK, so these two are the easier ones to play. These two are medium difficulty and these two are the hardest ones to play. So... Yeah, so this is the matchup that we're going to go with today. Unless, Rick, you wanted to play Thanon first. 
Well, I don't mind. I can play Thanon first. Sure, you play Thanon first. Okay. Right, so we're going to switch them around. So it's going to be Molran versus Thanon. Then we're going to do Ganto versus Kras. Then we're going to do Antar versus Wool. And after each game, uh, we're just going to take a few minutes to talk about that game. Um, yeah, because the decks do, certainly from the two that we've played already, they do play very differently. Uh, right, and I had a question about one card from this deck, which I asked them earlier on, and they said that you've answered me. Right. Let me know what the answer is when we get to that point. <laughs> okay, it's a genesis so, ability. It's a genesis it's ability. It's a genesis ability. Excellent. Thank you. There you go. So we're going to move them to one side. We're going to move them to one side. And what we're going to do, I decided not to set the game up ready on camera. And the reason for that is I wanted to actually show you how the game is set up. Now, the first thing to tell you is that these are pre-constructed decks. The game is going to come with pre-constructed decks. Please remember also, this is a prototype, so this is not final. And some of the cards you're going to see tonight don't have artwork on them, but they will have when it's when it's obviously done. So to do the setup, what you have to do is you have to find your champion card. Now, where's my champion card? So you put your champion card there. Your champion has basically got one life. Once your champion comes into play, if it ever leaves play, it's gone and that's it. Won't, won't ever come back in. The rest of your cards, you have four sanctuaries. One, two, three, four. And the rest of your cards are made up of acolyte and rituals. And what they do is they get shuffled and they will get put down as your deck. Your sanctuaries get played in order. Now, the sanctuaries have uh, two trackers on them. And again, this is a prototype. This is going to be slightly different, I believe, in the final version. But they have um, an ages track, which is basically their hit points. And they have a splendor track, which is like a, a, a timer to when their ability kicks in and you put them in order of splendor so this is this one has a splendor of zero so that's my first one the others have all they've all got a splendor of two so i can put them in whatever order i want and i'm just going to put them like that and then we're going to use these white cubes here to represent their ages so this one has got effectively four hit points so that gets four cubes this one has six uh, we're using the play mats today but the fine again prototype the final play mats uh, will actually come with trackers on them, which are going to look quite nice. But yeah, I decided to use the play mats today just because they're they are nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four. Now the other thing is the splendor track. So what we're going to do today, uh, and again, this is just for the purposes of this video. It will be slightly different in the final version. Is I'm actually going to put. Um, splendor cubes in front of these and I'm going to put one cube for each of the diamond symbols um, and then what we're going to do is at the end of every turn or at the end of my turn I will remove one of these cubes and once they've all gone the splendor ability kicks in the, the ability of the sanctuary will kick in so yeah it's like a timer and in three turns time all of these are going to activate that's right isn't it Rick yeah, for those yeah. three, or three those each. Three. And there you go. Now, we need to set Rick's cards up. So Rick is playing the Thanon. Um, and again, there is going to be deck construction rules in this game, but for this video, we are just using the pre-constructed decks that come with the game. So you've got... Um, right, your two sanctuaries that require... Two Splendor, you've got the Wellspring of Biral and the Shivering Tower. Which one would you like first? Should it matter? Uh, doesn't matter, I don't think. Not at this okay. point. I need to line these up a bit. So <clears> that <throat> needs to be there. there I'm go. quite excited by their abilities, though, to be honest. Well, I've not seen them yet. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, wow, cool. Okay, so uh, let's get your hit points ready first. So that one's got four. One, two, three, four. Uh, that one's got six. That one's got six. Do I have enough cubes? I think I do. Uh, and that one's got six as well. Okay, so you've got some quite tough sanctuaries here. Mm. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And Splendor. We've got four on that one. So that's going to be a while before you get that ability. That's three. That's two. Uh, 
and that's two as well. Right. Can everybody see that on camera? I think so. I think that's showing up on camera. There we go. Right. Now, your deck, which is made up, as I mentioned, of acolytes and rituals, you shuffle your deck and then you draw four cards. Now, I'm not going to go through the full rules of the game before we start playing. I am going to explain the basics and then we'll explain more as we go along. So, the objective of the game is to destroy your opponent's four sanctuaries. And the way that you do that is you will be summoning or deploying creatures, yeah, summoning and deploying acolytes onto the board or possibly even your champion. These are units. There are two rows. So you have an attack row at the front and then a defense row at the back. Anything that's in the attack row will be attacking and anything that's in the defense row will be defending against your opponent's attackers. And basically what's going to happen is if you've got a unit here that's got an attack value of two, that will deal two damage to the sanctuary. Once all of the hit points has gone, once the Aegis track is, is gone to zero, that sanctuary is destroyed, it's flipped over, and once all four have gone, you win the game immediately. Now the way that you defend yourself is by summoning units in the defensive line, and if you do that, then the two units will actually fight each other. And there's attack value and there's health, um, and we'll come on to that when we see it. So I think we're ready. I think we've done with the setup. I'm not going to explain any of the Sanctuary abilities yet because none of them apply right now and we're going to explain those as we go along. So I might I might ask you to explain yours, Rick, though, before I attack you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it might because change your mind as to where... It might. It might indeed. Right, OK. So I've shuffled my cards. You start off with a hand size of four. We're going to pretend that Rick's drawn four cards from his deck. He will tell me what he's got and I can keep mine here because they're off camera and you won't see them. There we go. Right, okay, now what we're going to do for the purpose of this video is we're going to put these dice here. Now these aren't necessary when you're playing in person but so that Rick can tell me which lane he's putting things in I'm going to use the dice there. I'm going to just move my deck uh, so that he can tell me which lane he's putting the, the cards in. I think that'll work. Right, so my deck is actually going there. And we need to decide who's going first. So let's roll the dice. Evens, you can go first. And odds, I'll go first. Heads. No, oh, it's rolled off. It's odds. Ah. Now, <laughs> I, say, I say odds, I go first. I can actually now choose if I want to, to go second. Um. Okay. Now, based on the cards I've got in my hand... I'm going to go second. Interesting. I believe that's right. I believe I can choose. So you go first. Right, now, Rick's taking the first turn. There are various steps to your turn. The first step is that you will gain two crystals, except the first player on the first turn of the game actually only gains one. Sad face. Okay. Yeah, now I've just noticed the brightness is a little bit high on the overhead camera, so bear with us a minute. I'm just going to pop that down a bit. I think that's better. Yeah, that's better. Right, I've turned the brightness down a bit. Um, okay, the next thing is Rick can basically play as many cards as he wants from his hand, but some of the cards cost crystals to play, and Rick only has one crystal. So Rick, what are you going to play? Uh, I'm going to play a card. Okay. And it's called... I'm hunt for it. It's called the Storm Precursors. Storm Precursors. Right, I've got it. So that costs one crystal to play. I'm going to put it here so people can see. So the top left is how many crystals it costs to play. So Rick mm -hmm. spends one crystal. And where would you like to play it? Uh, attack in row one. So lane one in the attack position. Now... All cards, when you summon them, come into play exhausted. However, there are certain icons that you will see on this card, and this icon is zealous. And what that means is it actually comes into play active and ready uh, and can do stuff. There are other icons on there as well. The middle icon, that one, is fierce. And the fierce icon means that the card can only be played in the attack row. It cannot ever be played as a defender. And the third icon, just so you know, is the Reaper ability. If this card ever deals damage to another card, the other card is immediately killed. 
Now, straight away, you might be thinking, oh my God, this game's really confusing. There's hundreds of icons. There's not. There's like seven. And Rick's played a card with three of them on turn one. So <laughs> there aren't actually that many icons. Don't worry about it. And once you've played it once, as, as we know, um, you will get the hang of the icons fairly quickly. Right. Anything That's else it. you want to play? That's it. The only card I'm playing. Right. Okay. So as I mentioned, there are cards that cost zero crystals. Rick either doesn't have any of those or doesn't want to play any of those. So once you've done playing all of your cards, we go to the attack phase. Now in the attack phase, you must attack with all of your units if you can. So we go from left to right from your point of view and we arrive here. Now the unit is active, so it can attack. And what it does is it deals its attack damage, which is two. There's no defending unit. So what happens is that two damage goes onto my sanctuary. So there you go. First blood to Rick. And that's it for the attack phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we do the end of turn sequence. In the end of turn sequence, uh, what happens? You, I know you get your units would ready. So any units that were exhausted would be yeah, active. Any that damage get their health back. That's it. And then you can discard any number of cards you want from your hand. Which I'm not going to. Okay, and then you draw back up to your hand size of four. And then I get Splendor for all of my sanctuaries. That's the thing, yes. So at that point, we're going to now, at the end of the Rick's turn, we're going to remove one Splendor from each of his sanctuaries. And remember, when all the Splendor is gone, that means those sanctuaries abilities will kick in. So at the moment, I'm okay, I'm safe. Are you done? Yep. Right, my go. So I get two crystals because I wasn't the first player. And I'm going to play. Now that's interesting. You've got that and I've got that. So I'm going to spend two crystals and I am going to play Pilgrim of the Gorge. And I'm going to play it in a defensive position on lane one. Now, this card has an, another icon that we haven't seen yet, but this is an ongoing ability. Um, I'm just going to see if my, if my zoomed in camera is working. Yes, I've got a zoomed in camera. So bear with us a minute. If I just move this around, you will be able to see the card. There you go. Hopefully that's clear. Um, so this card here has an ongoing ability that basically means if it was in an attack position, it would get plus one attack value. If it's in a defensive position, it will get plus one to its hit points. So it's there. And that is all I'm playing this turn. Oh, no, it's not. No, <laughs> it's not. Ooh. Oh, I've just noticed I've got a combo. Um, a combo on round one. I have a combo on round one. Oh, I'm just going to have a look at what your thing does here. Oh, wow. Don't worry we about don't that one. That. We don't, don't worry. worry about okay, that. change of plan, right? <laughs> I'm going to put this here instead. I'm going to put it as an attack unit in Ooh. lane four. Okay? Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now play the Peaks Chieftain as a defender in lane one. And I'm just going to zoom in again so people can see what this is. So the Peaks Chieftain has this ability. This uh, is the Genesis ability. And when this card comes into play, I can activate any unit. And what that means is I can activate this unit here. Now that's a combo for you. Right, I am done with my summoning phase. So in my attack phase, this one attacks. And because it's in an attack position, it's actually got four attack. Four attack? Four. No way. Yes way. I was looking forward to using that sanctuary. That sounded so good. Yeah, well, next game maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it. That sanctuary has gone. Now, you might think that once that sanctuary has gone, there is no point attacking. Well, first of all, you can't voluntarily move your units from one lane to another unless you have abilities that allow you to do that. But if you ever attack um, a sanctuary which has already been destroyed then your opponent loses one card from the top of their deck out of the game okay what you're doing is you're uh, you're wrecking the foundations of their sanctuaries 
And once a player is out of cards, if you ever need to draw cards and you don't have any, you have to destroy one of your sanctuaries. So running out of cards in your deck is a really bad thing. There we go. That is it. So at the end of my turn, I'm going to ready this unit. I'm going to draw back up to my hand size from my deck and I am going to remove one Splendor from each of my sanctuaries. So this sanctuary here now has no Splendor on it, which means it is it now has an, attack, uh, an active ability. And this is at the beginning of my attack phase. I can choose any one of my units. If that unit is destroyed during that attack phase, I get two crystals. There we go. Right, Rick, you're up. You get two crystals. Two crystals. Please. Interesting. Yes. So I've got two course of action I can do here. Now, which one to do? Do the one that hurts me the least. <laughs> uh, okay. So I think first action is I'm going to mm -hmm. play my champion for one oh, crystal. Right. So champions you can play as if they were in your hand. They <clears> cost, <throat> let's just zoom in. There we go. They cost a certain amount of crystals, as per here, but other than that, they are treated like any other unit, except when they die, when they're destroyed, they actually get removed from the game. They don't go to your discard pile, you can't get them back. So, Rick's Champion only costs one crystal to play. Where would you like to play it? I would like it in... Let's go... Attack in lane... Three. Okay. Now, this has the Zealous ability, so it comes into play ready. It has an ongoing ability that on your turn, the first time you move a unit, ah, so you can move units around. Um, <laughs> you may deal one damage to any Sanctuary, and it has the Reaper ability, so it's going to kill any any um, any unit that it damages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to play? Yep. A Prismatic Serpent. A prismatic serpent. Okay, so that costs one crystal. Where is that coming into play? Ooh. He he is going into attack in lane two. Attack in lane two. Now that has a genesis ability, which allows you to move any enemy unit. Yep. The okay. guy in defense in lane one mm -hmm. is moving to... Defence in lane three. So you can move them anywhere. Because the, the first game we played, we didn't have any moving abilities. Nope. So is that how it works? Moving I guess units. so. Uh, some abilities and rituals let you move a unit already on the battlefield to a valid empty position on the same side. There you go. Deploying My champion is still apply. Apply. So if it, if it was fierce, it, it would not be able to be deployed there. So... So my champion is exhausted, by the way. Is it? Yeah, he only just come out a minute ago. It's zealous. Oh, is he zealous? Is he? Yeah, yeah, your champion okay. is zealous. Oh, yeah. happy days. In which case, that's it for attacking. Right. Uh, we just had it confirmed in the Twitch chat that only the Thanon have move ability. So of the six decks we're playing tonight, that's good to know. Only the Thanon are able to move characters around. Okay, so we go through your attacks. So first of all, your champion attacks. And because there is a defender, these two characters now fight. So we have one attack versus two health. So you just deal me one damage. And but I deal one damage against three health. Now, but my champion is a reaper. Your champion is a reaper, yes. What I was going to say is that uh, damage will heal automatically at the end of the turn. So that's why there's no counters for damage. Um, because you've got to deal it all of that damage in one turn. But you're right, because it's a reaper, that is destroyed. There you go. That's going to go there. Right, next. Oh, and by the way, when I moved your guy, yeah. um, my champion activated as well. On your turn, the first time you move a unit, you may do one damage to any Sanctuary. Oh, yes, well spotted. So, which one do you want to damage? Sanctuary four. Sanctuary number four, Branch of the Clans. Okay. Next one, your Storm Precursors are attacking. There's nobody in defence, so you deal two damage. So the Cairn of the Brave is gone. We are one apiece. Hmm. Okay. Are you all done? Uh, yes. So we ready your units. You discard any number of cards you want from your hand and then draw back to four. 
Mm -hmm. And then it is my go. Right, okay. So my go. I get two crystals. Now, I'm, I'm a little worried here because there are three things attacking me. I don't have anything in defense. I do have this attacking. But all that's going to do is that's going to lose you a card from your deck, which I don't think you're worried about at this stage of the game. Um, now, there are things that I can do. There are definitely things that I can do. So, let's do them. Let's... Oh! Oh, that's quite good. Right, okay. So I'm going to bring into play Shadow of the Valley. Now, it costs one crystal, um, but it has got Zealous. So... Mm, and Reaper. And Reaper. But the Zealous doesn't... Um, just thinking about this. Hang on. No, I'm not going to play that. I'm going to play Mocking Hunter instead. Uh, now, I'm going to play this in defence. I'm just deciding where to place it, because this has got Reaper as well. So this is going to kill whatever it hits. And I think... I think I'm going to put it here. So it's in defence on lane three. Because then these two might. units will then kill each other. Um, I'm then going to spend another crystal. And I'm going to play... Hmm... Oh, this is tricky. Um, no, I'll tell you what. i tell you what. I'm not. I'm going to keep a crystal, and I'm going to keep these cards in my hand. Okay, so my attack phase. My Pilgrim of the Gorge attacks you, and your Sanctuary is destroyed, so you have to lose the top card of your deck. Here it goes, out of the game. There you go, and that is out of the game. Uh, and then that's it. Uh, it's my turn done. So my card's ready. Now, I can discard any number of cards I want from my, from my hand before I draw up to four. It's rare that you would want to do that because, as I mentioned, if you ever need to draw cards and your, your, your deck is empty, you have to destroy one of your sanctuaries, which is terrible. But if you're really up against it and you've really got a card in your hand that you don't want, and you might want to draw one that's really good, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to draw. Now that I've bigged it up, <laughs> I'm not going to. Right, and then I remove a Splendour from each of my Sanctuaries. Okay, your go. Have two crystals, sir. Okay. So... I am going to play a Feather Initiate. Mm -hmm in defense in lane two. So, a feather initiate in defense in lane two. That costs you one crystal. That has a Genesis ability which allows you to move any of your units. Yep, and my champion is moving into lane four attack. Okay, and then the first time you move a unit, you may deal one damage to any Sanctuary. I knew I should have got rid of that. Sanctuary 4. Sanctuary 4 takes a damage. Okay. It's not going well, is it? <laughs> Next, I'm playing... Um... Yeah, a Cloud Terror. Cloud Terror. It is one of these, which also costs one crystal to play. Yep. In attack in lane three. And that is zealous, so it comes into play active. Yep. Okay. That's the end of my okay. summoning phase. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, your champion, Biral, attacks. I have nobody in defence. One damage on the sanctuary. Yep. Okay. 
Next, Cloud Terror attacks. Does one Backlash. damage. I do have a unit in defense. So I take one damage, but I deal one damage back to you, but I have Reaper. So do I. No, you don't. Oh, no, don't. But I have, do have... You have uh, last words. So this is, yeah, I think yeah. this might be the last ability that we've seen, uh, that we haven't seen yet. This is last word. This is basically, it has an ability that will trigger once this unit is destroyed. So this unit is destroyed. You can now deal one damage to any Sanctuary. Sanctuary and lane four, please. Sanctuary lane four. So that is that Sanctuary destroyed as well. Sad times. <laughs> okay, lane two, you attack me for two. Yeah. Okay, and lane one, you attack me for two, and I have to lose the top card of my deck out of the game. I'm just going to put it face down. Ouch. This is not going well. <laughs> okay, are you uh, done? Yeah, draw up to my hand size. Yeah, and then we're going to remove this. So you now have... Which one's this gone active. live? This is the Wellspring of Birol is now active, and at the end of your summoning phase, you can put the top card of your discard pile on the bottom of your deck. Okay. Okay, there you go. Right, my go. I get two crystals. So I now have three, which means my master plan of a card that says three crystals win the game, which is uh, <laughs> one that I've just asked them to create with a picture of me smiling. Uh, afraid not. Okay, so. Now, unfortunately, neither of my Sanctuary abilities are active because you got rid of the ones that were. Uh, is that going to work? No. That's a shame. What about that? Uh, no. That's not going to work either. That one might work. Yeah. Um, hmm. Got a card here that probably requires me to be a bit more clever to work out how to use it effectively. <laughs> so, not going to do that one. I think we need to do some defence. So I'm going to play Pilgrim of the Gorge as a defender in lane two. Okay. That cost me two crystals. I am then going to play. We talked about ongoing abilities, didn't we? We did, yeah. So this has basically got four health because it's it's a defender. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to take a bit of a gamble. So you don't have any more moving. <laughs> you probably do. So I'm just going to put this one down for one crystal. This is a Shadow of the Valley. Uh, oh, actually, that's fierce. So it has to go in attack. So no, it's not fierce. It's it's zealous. Ah. So it doesn't have to go in the front, but I kind of want it to go in the front because then it it actually does something. Um. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm going to put it in lane three as an attacker. Okay, and then I'm going to play the Cunning Instructor, which costs zero crystals. And I'm going to place it as an attacker in lane two. Now, this has a Genesis ability, which says units on its flanks gain plus one attack until the end of your turn. So the flanks are the direct left and right of the creature, not in the other bit, but mm. just left and right. So this has actually got an attack of three. Okay. So that's the end of my summoning phase. We now go to my attack phase and Shadow of the Valley is attacking for three. That's that gone. Uh, and my Pilgrim of the Gorge is attacking and you lose another card from your deck. Okay. It is then your go. I'm going to keep this card in hand, am I? No, I'm actually going to discard that card because I don't fully understand how to use it. I mean, the rules are clear, it's just tactically. And I'm going to draw four in the hope that I get some of the useful ones. Right, you're going. Two mm. crystals. Oh, no, hang on. 
remove the splendor. So both of my sanctuaries are now active. Yeah. So the Garanath first stone is at the beginning of my attack phase. I can choose any one unit. And if I do, I double the damage dealt to this unit. So I choose one of your units and I basically mark it for death. And it will take double damage. Then I have Towering Arena, which is at the beginning of my attack phase. I can search my deck for any unit. Now that's already after I've done the summoning. But for I, next turn, it, it, it's preparing for next turn. Yeah. Right, your go. You have two crystals. And I need a drink because this is thirsty work. Hmm. Right. Uh, I think I'm just going to do this. A surefire strike. Surefire strike. Is that a ritual? Yep. So we've not seen rituals yet. I mentioned at the start your deck was made up of acolytes and rituals. Most of the cards in here are acolytes, but some of them are rituals. Rituals are one off, they're like spells. You pay the cost, you do what it says, and then you put the card to the, disc the discard pile. So this costs two crystals, it's really expensive, and it's destroy any acolyte. Your defending guy in lane two. The defending guy in lane two. Well, you mean the really big tough guy? Yep. That one. <laughs> The one that I lovingly saved up to, to purchase. <laughs> right. It had to be. Uh, that's it for my summoning phase. Okay, so attacks. Bish bash attack, bosh. And I lose yeah. another card from my deck. Uh, this attacks, and I lose two damage. I take two damage on the Garanath first stone. Yep. Uh, this one attacks, and I lose another card from my deck. Ouch. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. The Wellspring of Birel sort of I needed to do earlier as well, which is the end of your summoning phase. Put the top card of your discard oh, yes. pile at the bottom of your deck. Are you going to do that? <clears throat> what is the top card of my discard pile according to I, your I, discard pile? I don't know. I've not been keeping track of your discard pile. Have you? Okay. In which case, I'll do it then. It's just that well, one. Oh, no, maybe I do. Yeah, I am. Sorry. The top card of your discard pile is Surefire Strike. Oh, no. Yes, because that's the end yeah. of my summoning phase, wasn't that it? Was, yeah, 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 yeah. So that goes on, on the deck. bottom of your deck. There you yeah. go. Cool. Right. And you discarded two cards, didn't you, out of the game? I've, I've lost three cards in total out of the game from my deck. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. so therefore, <laughs> I draw a card and one of my th other places activates. Right, I'm going to put your discard pile in the same place that my discard pile is. Okay. So I get Splendor off for both of my sanctuaries? Yeah, Splendor off both of your sanctuaries. So this ability is now active, which is Feather Cliffs. At the end of your summoning phase, you may move any of your units to any position. Yep. Okay. Right. My go? Yep. Now then. I'm in a spot of bother here. Cool, 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 cool. I mean, I'm losing cards from my deck, but if I can win the game before that, that's not the problem. Um, okay, so let's, let's put, aha, uh -oh. that will work. I'm worried. Well, first of all, I'll take two crystals because I need crystals. Um, okay, so I'm going to play Whisper of the Peaks as an attacker in lane one. Uh -oh. Because what that does is when it comes into play as a Genesis ability, units on its flanks get plus one health until the end of the turn. So my cunning instructor uh. he now has three health, which means it's going to survive the fight against the Feather Initiate. Cheeky. See my cunning plan. Um, so that was free. I like free. I am then going to play... Uh, I am going to play the Hammerang Brotherhood as a defender in lane four. So this costs one crystal. Uh, it's him again. It's him again. It has plus two attack for each of your units on its flanks. Naughty Panda. Actually, I'm not going to put it there. I'm going to put it there. I'm putting it as a defender in lane two. That's a shame. Mm. And then... I am going to put my Savage Fang Acolyte, which, oh, that costs, yeah, that's right. That costs one, uh, that costs one, so I've still got one crystal. Uh, the Savage Fang Acolyte <sighs> goes into play as a defender in lane one. Gosh. Yeah. Okay, right. 
I'm done playing cards. So at the beginning of my attack phase, two things happen. I can search my deck for any unit, which I'm going to, and I'm going to put it into my hand, and it's going to be that one. And then she'll no, not, the deck afterwards. not that one. That, oh, I'm supposed to reveal it. Uh, <laughs> it's the Hoarder of the Den. Oh, that means so much to me. It's the one that gates me crystals when it comes into play. Oh, yeah. Every unit on my side of the board. And you've got a million units at the moment. I have one million units, correct. Approximately. <laughs> 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 okay. Also, at the beginning of my attack phase, I can choose a unit, and that unit will take double damage. When's that? At the beginning of your summoning now, phase? Yeah, beginning of my attack phase. It doesn't oh, okay. matter because the unit's going to die anyway. But I'm going yeah. to choose your Feather Initiate to take double damage. Oh, what? Okay, so let's go through my attacks. My Cunning Instructor hits you. I kill you. I've got an extra health because of the Whisper of the Peaks. Lucky. So, it's not lucky, it's skill. <laughs> uh, my Shadow of the Valley deals two damage to your Sanctuary. And my Pilgrim of the Gorge attacks you and you lose a card from your deck. Oh, another one. Uh, and Tabula is saying, yes, I'm seeing the power of the Molran in action. They get stronger when they are together. Yes, definitely with the flanking bonuses. Definitely yeah, and plus that. you've got cards that cost naught. I don't think I've got cards that cost naught in my deck. Right, okay. That's the negative side of this deck, I think. Yeah, I mean, some of them cost three, but you're right. I've got a few that cost zero. Right, I'm done. So I'm going to draw two cards from my deck, which is... Okay, yeah, I need to end the game before I run out of cards. Okay, your go. You get two crystals. Yep. Okay. You're okay for cards in your deck, aren't you? You've still got loads left? Yeah, loads. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so, I am playing the Prismatic Serpent. We've seen that before. We have. It's another one. Where's that going? Uh, in attack in lane three. Yeah, okay. So the Genesis ability is you can move an enemy unit. Panda is oh. going defence in lane four. Yeah. You mean where I was going to put it initially? <laughs> yeah. That's where it now is. And you now get to damage a sanctuary. Sanctuary in lane three. Yeah. Okay. That okay. Gives you one crystal. Yep. Okay. Uh, and now I'm putting an unfledged elite. An unfledged elite, which also cost one crystal. Uh, in defence in lane three. Defence in lane three. So this has a last word ability of drawing a card. Okay. Anything else? That is all. You know what I have forgot? Oh, what my, yeah, my things. No. The end of my... I forgot my champion. <laughs> you haven't used your champion yet. No. The big strong guy who can yeah. kill things and one it. Yeah. He's having uh, a lie down somewhere. Right. My two things are active though at the end of my summoning phase. Yep. Put the top card of your discard pile on the bottom of my deck. So your feather initiate goes on the bottom of your deck. Yep. Uh, yep. And my other one is at the end of summoning phase you may move any of your units to any position. Now I've already done the one damage. You have. Uh... So I'm good. I'm not going okay. to... Right, so attacks. Mm -hmm. You're going to deal one damage to me with Reaper, but I'm yep. going to deal three back to you. Now, unfortunately, killing my fella. So finally, the hero, or so the champion, has gone, and the champion gets removed from the game. Mm -hmm. Never to return. Okay. Yeah, I could have moved him away. Maybe I should have. Oh, well. Next. Your Prismatic Serpent attacks. Does two damage to me. I deal one back to you with Reaper. You've got Reaper? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The mocking hunter. He's got he's got, he's got like a blowpipe, poisonous blowpipe. So that's he's it. got three health, hasn't he? He does. So he uh, survives. Maybe I should have moved them as well. <laughs> your but what I was focusing serpent. on was this one. Yeah. Your next prismatic serpent destroys the Garanath first stone. Ouch. And then your storm precursors attack the Savage Fang, and I believe that we both kill each other because we've got two attack and two hit points yep okay lots of death and destruction there we go right any more 
Uh, nope. I think that's it. So I draw a card. Yep. And your remaining sanctuary ability is now active. So you're now, at full power, which is your hand limit point, is now five. What point do I draw up to hand limit? Is it before or after the Splendor? Uh, I think it's... Let's just check the rule book. Uh, so in your end of turn phase, partial damage heals, units become active, sanctuaries advance, and then you draw cards. So it's I've got five cards. So you do get five yeah. cards in your hand. Cool. Right, my go. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I might play my leader. Now that I've oh, what? <laughs> but there's nowhere for him to attack because all of my lanes are full of people. <laughs> that's a good point and you can replace people though can't you oh you can and then what happens to the replaced ones they get they destroy they get discarded are they destroyed or are they just moved aside destroyed I think it doesn't matter they... for me but I'm thinking more about yeah it can factions. activate the ability yeah. um, right what are we going to do I mean I do need some defence I definitely need some defence Christine okay. says I thought the cards that without Zealous couldn't attack the turn and come into play but they everybody can't. Yeah. Have did we, we some... attack? Did we get someone to attack that only came into play? I don't think we did. Did we? I don't we? think so. Have a have a look back on the YouTube chat. Did we? Did we miss something? That's the only comment. Yeah, we we may have done. Apologies if we have, uh, but there's nothing in the Twitch chat to say that we got anything wrong. So, cross fingers. But we'll, we'll try and keep an eye on that more closely. Um, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to deal two damage to that. I'm going to deal two damage to that. And these two are going to kill each other. So that's okay. I'm not in a bad position at the moment. So let's... Yeah, let's just do some stuff. Right, I'm going to play... The problem is, if I, because I can't move my units, I'm... I'm a bit nervous about actually just playing cards just for the sake of it. Um, but there are there are some abilities here that are quite cool. So I'm going to put the I'm going to put the Savage Fang here as a defender in lane two. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put. Or am I? No, I am. Yeah, so Savage Fang is going down as a defender in lane two. Um, that cost me nothing. I am then going to play... Hmm. I kind of want to save this for an attack, but... I don't like the thought of overwriting my units just because it's it seems a waste. But this is the this is the tactical decision to make. I think it is probably better for me to overwrite a unit right now. But I don't want to. Because <laughs> I'm scared. So I'm not. I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna put the Hoarder of the Den into lane one as a defender. That cost me three crystals, but it has a Genesis ability that I gain a crystal for each other unit on my side so christine says that the prismatic guy i put in lane three didn't attack when it came out and other people are agreeing so the prismatic serpent that i put out was uh, was obviously exhausted okay. when i put it out there thank you for that so that shouldn't have attacked is what we're saying yeah and therefore it okay. wouldn't have died there we go okay so we've fixed it thank you very much uh and uh, leonardo is in the facebook uh, sorry in the youtube chat and saying yeah replacing units is a good way to trigger last word abilities so it does right you with me rick i've played the hoarder of the den in lane one and i drew uh, a million crystals, crystals. Yeah. Ouch. yeah so i've now got six crystals which means i think i am now going to bring into play nomar force of the mole run champion uh oh. It cost me three crystals and I'm going to overwrite. And we're going to overwrite. He's zealous as well, isn't he? He is zealous yeah. and he's fierce. And he's got. He's also got the last ability that we haven't explained, which is Veil. Basically, he can't be targeted by any uh, rituals or abilities. He's also a poo poo head. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it here in lane one as an attacker. So that card is destroyed. 
and I've still got three crystals left. So I'm actually going to spend two of them to replace the cunning instructor with an elusive scrapper. A bit worried about all these people appearing. Yeah. There you go. Although I have spent like eight crystals this turn. Right, I'm done. I'm not playing any other cards. Good. So, everything that came into play this turn on my side was zealous, apart from these two. So I'm, I'm ready to do my attacks. Uh -oh. So this is attacking for four. So Nomar is attacking for four. Yep. Yep. And my elusive scrapper is attacking for three. The Shadow of the Valley is attacking, but you have a defender. We both die because I've got Reaper. Uh, and you deal more damage to me than my health. So these two both die. But you have a last word ability where you get draw to draw a card. a card. So you draw a card. Interesting. Oh, that Thank should you. be ready now. And then my Pilgrim of the Gorge attacks and you lose the top card of your deck. Gone. Okay. Um, I am going to... Oh, do I discard this card? No, at this stage, I'm not going to discard it. I don't really want it, but I am concerned about the number of cards I've got left in my deck, which is eight. It's quite tense. Right. Yeah. Eight, only eight cards. Your go. <laughs> right. Crystals. I think you're in trouble now. I, well, I know it's swung a little bit, isn't it? Right. <laughs> I'm playing Celebrate the Heroes. It's a ritual. Celebrate the heroes. Okay, so that costs one crystal. Guess what it does? It gains two crystals. Well, good guess. <laughs> guess I'm playing next. Celebrate the heroes. Correct. Okay, so you spend one crystal to play Celebrate the Heroes to gain two crystals. There you go. Next. So I've now got four crystals. Good, 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 good. I okay. do have four crystals. That oh, fella. He should be ready. I also think I forgot to search my deck for a unit. Yeah, never mind. I forgot to do that. That's my fault. <sighs> yeah, keep in mind to use the Sanctuary's abilities. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. the end of, but they're both at the end of the summoning phase. Yeah. And yeah. both those I fellas are my, out. Definitely. Uh, only two attack and the guy there has got three health which is a problem so I'm playing a cloud terror okay in lane one in one attack crystal. yeah attack in lane one yep uh, that has zealous yep I am playing a unfledged elite. Which costs one crystal. In defence in lane two. Defence in lane two. Yep, yeah, that has a last word ability of drawing a card. And I'm playing a paladin of Kor Hanan. Paladin of Kor Hanan, which defense costs one. Defence lane one. Yep. Yeah. That has an ongoing ability that at the end of your summoning phase... You can move this unit to any position. Right, okay, cool. Yeah. So, that's the end of my summoning phase. So, at the end of my right. summoning phase, I'm going to move my fella in lane t three, sorry, my attack guy in lane three. Using which ability? My sanctuary ability. Yeah, okay. Feather Cliffs. Where is it going to go? He's going to attack in lane four instead. Okay. Yep. Then I'm using my fella, my paladin of Korhanan I just put out. To move it to He's there? Going to, yep. Okay. And at the end of the summer, I can put my top card on my discard pile onto the bottom of my deck, which is yep. according to you is... Celebrate the heroes. Celebrate the heroes. Okay. Right. Are you done? Yes. So that's your summoning phase over, so now we do your attack. So your prismatic serpent attacks my destroyed sanctuary and I lose a card from my deck. Yep. Uh, that is exhausted so that doesn't attack. This other prismatic serpent attacks the savage fang and we kill each other. Okay. And then in lane one your cloud terror attacks D 
deals one damage. I've got two health. But he's poison. Well, he's no, he's got. Not. He's got last word. Oh, he's not. He's got last word. Yeah. To deal one damage to a sanctuary. So, yeah, I kill you, but your last word is you can deal one damage to a sanctuary. The one, the one I want to do. One, <laughs> that one, the only one that's left. Yeah. Right. End of your go. Yeah. So they ready. We did draw, draw back up to five. Uh, five. Cards in your deck. Loads. So. Oh. So I keep putting cards on the bottom of my deck. Right. True. Right. I get two crystals. Um. Oh my god. Okay, so that's <laughs> gonna go. Oh, I just need. A, oh. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? That's a shame. Okay, so this will work. Oh, no, this isn't what I thought it was. This is totally different. Oh, this is even better. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> what you meant to say. You meant to say it's I, worse. I'm going to play Peak's Resistance, which is a ritual. Choose any of your units. I'm going to choose this one. Uh, it deals... Sorry, no, this one. It deals damage equal to its health to any enemy unit. So I have five health. Any enemy unit. Any enemy unit. Flame it now. So I'm going to kill the unfledged elite. Okay. Now you your last word ability kicks in and you get to draw a card. Okay. I am then... Oh, so close to winning this turn. So close. That's not what I'd like to hear. Um, I'm going to play Peak's Resistance again. Ah, uh, what? Yeah, and I'm going to deal five damage to your Paladin of Korhanan. <sighs> you scared yet? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. <clears throat> you can kill me. I can. So I'm going to bring into play the Roar of the Peaks which goes there. It has a coming into play ability to deal damage to everything in there, but there isn't anything there. Then I'm going to play for zero, the Peak's Chieftain, which activates this. What, what, what does it activate? Any unit? Activate any unit. Ugh. And then I attack. Bash, bash, bash. And win. Ah. There you go. So that card that I kept in my hand that I was thinking of throwing away, it's not the one I thought it was. I thought it was the one that gave me extra health. As it was, it's the one that allows me to basically kill a unit. I just drew three zero-cost cards as well. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, Leonardo is saying, remember to check if the Thanon moving ability that you're using is referring to your units, or maybe you're opposing ones too. So this yeah. core Hannon was move itself. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. Some of the other ones can move their units. Right, victory. So if we if we count the game that we played earlier on today, it's one yeah. all. But that didn't go out live, so it's one nil. So tonight it's one nil. Ah. Oh. Okay. Because otherwise we might end in a draw. Right now. That was a quick... yeah. Except I was kicking butt. <laughs> you were. You were. But yeah, it's it's interesting how it can change. And I think once you've played the decks a few times, you will obviously get better at your own deck. But also you'll start to learn what kind of tricks your opponents got. Yeah, totally. Mm. So how did you feel playing... Because this is the second time I've played this deck. How did you feel playing that one for the first time? Well, I felt it was quite strong. Being able to move people around or moving people out of defence. Yeah. And then just bashing them is really good. Um, but as I say, a lot of the ones I had were either one or two crystals a card. So I could only play yeah. one or two cards a turn. But then obviously the second half of my deck, looking through it, there's a load of zero costs. Right. Bad shuffling for me, obviously. Bad shuffling. <laughs> but I, I had no worries about running out of cards because i kept on putting a discard card at the bottom of my deck that's the thing so me attacking your destroyed sanctuaries didn't hurt you as much as it would with some of the other factions no yeah um and that it's good that you got rid of that sanctuary because one of them seemed really powerful at okay. the end of my summoning phase deal two damage to any unit that that seemed crazy powerful yeah the um the shivering tower yeah just wipe out all your people yeah yeah i was a bit worried about that so yeah definitely get rid of that one first right so that's game one done tonight. I hope everybody's enjoying it. That is game one done. We are eight o'clock. We're going to do three games tonight. Future games are probably going to go a bit quicker um, because we're not going to be explaining the rules. And remember, me and Rick are fairly new to this game. We have only played one game before, and that is the first time 
uh, that Rick has played that deck. So the, your actual play time for this game is probably going to be about 30 minutes once you know the game. Mm. We are going to be a bit longer just for this. Right, let's put the decks away. Uh, anybody who needs to disappear now, thank you very much for joining in. But if you're staying with us, we're now going to move on to the second set of decks. If you have any questions about the game at all, um, the publishers are in the Twitch chat, so feel free to ask questions. See if you can get some answers. The game is on Kickstarter right now. So if you want to check out the Kickstarter campaign, it's running for another 21 days. They've just unlocked a stretch goal today where they're going to introduce proper deck building rules where all of the cards are going to get assigned point values and then you can build a deck based on points values. Which, for me, and I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to promote the game, being somebody who's played um, collectible card games for 20 odd years, having deck construction rules with points assigned to the cards gets my thumbs up. Um, because otherwise what happens is you just get people using you know, the most powerful cards all the time. All the best cards, yeah. All the best cards all the time. And then all of your decks become fairly similar. Okay, next up we are Ganto versus Crass. So this is the one I played earlier, wasn't now, it? You, yeah, Rick's played Crass earlier on. Uh, I have not played Ganto. So this is going to be a voyage into the unknown for me. And as I mentioned earlier on, this is a prototype. So as you start seeing these cards and think, oh, that's not very good artwork, there will be nice artwork on them. <laughs> in fact, when I posted this on social media earlier on this week, uh, a lot of the comments in reply were that the artwork's really nice for the game. So it's always nice when it looks nice. Mm. Right, okay, let's set up your sanctuaries and your champion. There's your champion, there's your deck, and your sanctuaries in order are uh, Source of the Flow, Steaming Caves, and then the Colony Gates and the Deeps of Dusnia. There you yep. go. That's yours. Right, let's get your, your Aegis. So that's got four. Uh, that's got six. Six. Next one's got four. Yeah, I think I'd like to play that other deck again at some point. I think what the one you've just played, the Thanon. Yeah, yeah. Being able to move things around is is good fun. Well, they've said in the chat that that's the only faction that can do that. Mm. It's quite nice that there are um, abilities where there's only one faction that has that ability. Gives them character, doesn't it? I guess it gives them character. Yeah. But imagine um, making a deck though, which has had bits of everything. So super strong ones, things that can move. Oh yeah, true. Think, Once you start okay. getting into the deck construction rules, you can do all sorts. Two there and two there. Right. Okay. So that's you done. Me. What do we have here? So I'm just going to look at my cards and actually go to read them out because this is the first time I've opened this deck. So my champion in Ashtet has got no attack. Yeah, same as mine. <laughs> Four health. But once per turn, I can either deal one damage to a sanctuary or repair one damage to a sanctuary. It must have health. It's got four health. Okay, good. Yeah, four health, but no attack. But so you said deal... you had no health or attack. Like, so no, no, it's got no attack. I did say no health. I didn't mean no health. It's got four health, no attack. But yeah, he can damage sanctuaries or heal sanctuaries. So that's that one. Right. Now, I have um, Heart of the Swamp. So once that has activated, uh, at the end of my turn, I can repair up to one Aegis from any of my sanctuaries. Gosh. The next one is the <clears throat> Hall of the Foresighted. At the end of the turn, at the end of my turn, I can deal one damage to any sanctuary. We know Just... what this deck's all about. Yeah. Um, we have the Sentient Rocks. Hope it's Acolytes a week. <laughs> at the end of your turn, if this sanctuary is not six, gain a crystal. Interesting. If it's not, if it's not at full Aegis, I get a crystal. Right. So if you damage it. Yeah. And the Pools of Omniscience. At the end of your turn, if this sanctuary is not at six Aegis, draw a card. Right. I know which two I'm attacking first then. Not those two. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's just put the the splendor on. So that needs that actually needs four. So remember, none of those abilities are active yet. If you're just tuning in, hello and welcome. Um, I would recommend rewinding and watching game one because game one we did kind of a tutorial. Now we're just going to play. We're not going to do much of a tutorial from this point. We're just going to play. Right. I think we're all done. We're all ready. Um, let's put your champion over there, actually. Our and champion. Off we go. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so we're going to see two more unique deck mechanics. The Crass get powerful with destruction of their own units. And the Ganto interact directly with their own sanctuaries. There you go. So yeah, this is why I wanted to do the three games tonight, to show off all six decks, just to show you that there is different styles of play amongst each of them. If we'd have only done one game tonight, Rick, I don't think we would have... I don't no. think we'd have shown off enough of the game. Yeah. I like how each deck is completely different. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Okay. How it's going to affect my playstyle, I'm not sure. We will see. Because, of course, the only time I've played this, I've used that previous deck. Right, 1-0 to me. Who's starting? Uh, I would say the loser of the previous game should decide whether they want to start or not. So, mm. your choice. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second? I will go... Sorry for the drinking noises, but I'm very thirsty. <laughs> I get thirsty when it's, when it's tense. <laughs> the last game was definitely tense. I will go... Oh, decisions, decisions. I will go first. Okay, so you get one crystal. Off you yep. go. Okay, I'm playing the Anthem of Phaeus. Anthem of Phaeus. Attack a lane. Acolyte? Where's that going? Attack lane two. Now, are you sure you want to play that? <clears throat> well, I'm assuming I don't have to do that ability. Okay. I think they said that they're... Right, we need to check this. We need to check rules-wise. Oh, the chat seems to have just disappeared. While the chat's disappeared, can we just check a ruling on the Anthem of Chaos? Uh, the Anthem of... Not Chaos. The I Anthem just... of Phaeus. So it doesn't say any one of your other units. No, but it says destroy one of your units, and this is one of your units. Is this optional, or is it mandatory? I'm just going to try and... Will it kill itself? YouTube chat. Will it kill itself is the question. Uh, yeah, YouTube chat seems to just have died, and now it is back. So it's mandatory, so you don't want to play that, Rick. Don't want to play that then? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Instead, then I'm playing a voracious warder. Let's rewind that. Uh, I would have thought if I played it first, then I have no. no other units. Happy days. No. But what you have seen is that Rick's deck sometimes destroys its own units. Uh, let's zoom out again. There we go. So you're playing the Voracious Warder for a cost of one crystal. Yep. And where's that going to go? Two. Say again? Attack lane two. So lane two, and it has Zealous, so it comes into play ready. And anything else you want to play? That's it, I've only got one crystal. Okay, so that attacks, deals me two damage. Boom. That's a pretty good card for one crystal, isn't it? It's a very good card. Bashy, right. fishy, bash. Yeah, is it my go? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> oh, this is great. I like this deck already. Because when I used to play Magic, I used to play very defensive, sort of white, blue protection, healing and stuff like that. And that's kind of what this deck is. Well, it could be um, interesting because I think I'm all attacking, aren't I, in this one? <laughs> you just, I'll just hide in a corner and you keep beating me up. <laughs> um, oh. Right. I see. So, I'm going to play... Oh, hang on. We've got to remove your um, oh, yeah. Splendor. And I need to draw a card. And you need to draw a card. Yes, there you go. The chat is probably saying, don't forget to draw Splendor. No, it's not. <laughs> right, so my go. Um, I get two crystals. And I am going to bring it into play. Now. I am going to... Ooh. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring into play, as an attacker in lane four, the expert of restorations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it has a genesis ability that I can repair up to two damage onto one of my sanctuaries. Bop. Really? Yep. Yep. Already? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy yeah that, that is crazy okay now I am also going to bring my hero into play now this might be a bit risky Ooh. yeah my hero is going to come into play and I think I'm going to bring it into play as a defender in lane 2 interesting so what does he do again uh, once per turn, I can deal a damage to a Sanctuary or repair a damage to a Sanctuary. And I'm going to deal a damage to the Source of the Flow. It's just me. Okay. Uh, and then, I'm still going. <laughs> I am going to play the Hermit Landscaper as an attacker in lane 1. He was wearing his cloak of invisibility, as you can see from this. <laughs> so this is a three-two um, acolyte that, when it leaves play, or when it's destroyed, I can repair up to one Aegis on each of my sanctuaries. What? That's crazy. Yep. Flip. Um, oh, I think I'm going to play this as well. Yeah, I'm going to play this as well. Uh, I'm going to play a visionary claim, a visionary reclaimer as an attacker in lane three. Costs no crystals to play, <laughs> uh, and it has an ongoing ability that at the end of my turn, if a ritual or an ability dealt damage to one of my sanctuaries, I gain a crystal. Okay, I am done. I have no wow. attacks because everything is exhausted. But then at the end of my turn, everything red is. I remove one of these splendors. I draw back up to four cards and it's your go. How would you like them apples? Not much. There you go. And I'm going to mute my microphone while I take it. Hmm. Right, I'm back. Your fellow in uh, row four has only got one attack, hasn't he? This has one attack, yeah. The expert of restoration is all about rebuilding things. He's not very good at attacking. Okay. So. Just going to zoom in and show you some of the artwork of these sanctuaries because it's quite nice. I'm going to use is, a... Nah, it's not showing. That's a shame. I'm going to play the Faius Donation Ritual. Are oh, you now? Certainly am. Okay. What does that do? Destroy any of your Acolytes in order to gain one Crystal or draw up to two cards. Destroy any of your Acolytes in order to gain one Crystal or draw up to two cards. So you're going to destroy the Voracious Warder? Yep. Okay, since he wasn't going to be doing anything. Correct. Uh, so okay, that goes I... to the discard pile first. And yeah. you're taking a crystal, or are you yes. taking? So you've Take actually now got three crystals. Three crystals. Apparently, yeah. YouTube chat isn't updating. YouTube chat isn't updating. Well, I noticed it did die, and then it came back. So I will, I will remove it and re-add it. Thank you very much for letting us know. I am then going to play an outburst runner in attack in lane two. So an outburst runner. As an attack in lane two. So this is a two crystal unit. It's very expensive. Yep. I've got I've got the chat working again. Yeah. Um it's got Veil and it's got Reaper. Oh, that's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very nice uh, at all. That's why I thought it was a bit risky playing my champion. But uh yeah, I, them's the I'm then gonna play the preceptor of the fury. Preceptor of the Fury for one crystal. Defense lane four. Defense lane four. Okay. That has a Genesis ability. Just that allows do. you to resolve the last word ability on any of your units on the battlefield, which you don't have any of. 
Okay. Yep. Are you all done? Yep. So no attacking for you. And now one splendor comes off each of your things. So two of your sanctuaries are now active. The first one is source of the flow. At the end of your turn, get a crystal. Yep. Nice. Yes, please. Yes, please. Have a crystal. I'll get one now. And the other one is the steaming caves. Your hand limit is five. Yep. <coughs> okay. Right. Right. Are we back? Is it my go? Mm -hmm. It is my go. Get two crystals. So if I don't do something, my hero, my champion is going to die. Now, what can I actually do? <laughs> yeah, not a lot, I'm afraid. Hmm. Yeah, if I was building my own deck, I definitely have a couple of cards that allowed me to move things around. <laughs> definitely. Okay, so. Uh, and it's interesting because I don't have many cards with Zealous in this deck, whereas in the previous one, it was everywhere. And I don't have any of my sanctuary abilities yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them at some point. I think I just need to go on the offensive. So I'm going to play the, the Dogged Infiltrator as an attacker in lane two, which oh. is Zealous. Okay. Yeah. Oof. Uh, no crystal cost on that one. What ability has it got? It's got a last word ability that you can. I can deal one damage to any sanctuary and one damage to one of my sanctuaries. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I haven't used Ineshtet yet, but I will before the end of my turn. So, attacks. I hit you for three in lane one. I hit you for one in lane two. I hit you for one in lane three. And in lane four, I deal one to you and you deal two back to me. So my expert of restorations, unfortunately, is did. Um, now then, what am I going to deal damage to within Ashtet? Uh, let's for, deal it? damage to... Uh, the colony gates. Yeah. Okay. Right. I am done. So I'm going to remove some splendor from my sanctuary. So these two are now active. So at the end of my turn, I can deal a damage to any sanctuary. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a bit of a timer, that. It's going to kill me if I don't do anything about take that. another one off the colony gates. And also, at the end of my turn, I can repair up to one from any of my sanctuaries. Uh, but none of them have taken any damage. So that's that. I get to draw a card. And I'm actually, I think I'm going to discard that one. Oh, but it's got, hmm. Nope, I'm not going to discard anything. I'm too nervous about discarding cards. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, YouTube chat should be fixed again now. So if you want to start popping messages in the YouTube chat, uh, yeah, just to let us know that it's working. And feel free to talk amongst yourselves and hurl abuse at me and Rick while we can't read it. <laughs> Although I can read it. Right, so I gain, go. gain two more crystals. Gain so I've got crystals, three now. Putting you on three, yep. Okay. So I'm putting a swarm recruiter in attack in lane one. Attack in lane one, and that doesn't have Zealous, so that costs one crystal. But the Genesis ability is you get to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're just going to check the YouTube to see if it is actually working. See if it appears. I've just sent myself a test message on YouTube chat. So let's see if it is working. Yep. Yes, it's working. Right. Yeah, YouTube chat is back working again. Everyone's too enthralled in the game. So well, that's it. Or they've fallen asleep. Hopefully they haven't. But we have 21 people watching on YouTube. So hello, 21 people. 
Uh, I don't know how many we have watching on Twitch. Uh, Frodo uh, is here saying thank you very much for the streams. No problem. T Ten, I think, on Twitch. Right, so I'm playing an Oblivious Wrecker. Okay. In defense in lane one. Oblivious Wrecker in defense in lane one. So that doesn't cost any crystals. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't like that one. And then playing the Anthem of Phaeus. Okay. <laughs> in defense in lane three. Okay, so the Anthem of Phaeus destroys one of your units when it comes into play. Guess which one I'm destroying? The, the one I just put down. Yep. How much health have your guys with... got? The three um, attacking guys. Two. Two two and two? Two, one, one. My leader's got four. Okay, kill the guy with the two health, please. Yeah. So you deal two damage to the Hermit Landscaper. Yeah. That's a shame. I'm then playing an Oblivious Reco in lane one in defense. Another one. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm and then playing an anthem of Phaeus. Oh, you had two of no. each. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> in anthem of Phaeus. Yep. Yeah. In defence in lane two. Defence in lane two, and that kills the oblivious the fella. again. Yep. Which deals another two damage. Yep. Which one do you want uh, to kill? That guy in the middle. The, has he got Reaper? He hasn't, has he? This one had Reaper. Which one has Reaper? That one. This one does not. This has the last word ability that I can deal one damage to one of your sanctuaries and one to one of mine. And which one's got Reaper? Uh, the Visionary Reclaimer, the one in lane three. Kill him, please. Okay. Uh, so that is dead. We're also getting some advice um, saying also consider pinging your own sanctuaries to activate their abilities. Yeah, your two, which has only activate when they've got damage uh, on them. Oh, yeah. They? Yeah, thank you. I hadn't thought of that. I mean, it's obvious now that you've mentioned it. Uh, and then I'm done for my summoning phase. So, attacks. Yes. You attack me, and because you have Reaper... Oh, both my crystals are gone, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so that's my... My champion is dead and gone from the game. Deed. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm actually putting removed from the game cards face down on the bottom of the discard pile rather than putting them away just so that they don't get lost. Okay. I think that's that's clear. A face down card on the discard pile means it's actually gone and you can't get it back. As I say, that's not an official rule. It's just what I'm doing today. Right. So I, I draw back like up to five. It might become a, an official rule. You draw back up to five and you're done. And I get a, and I get a crystal. Because you've got GT card. Of my sanctuary. Yeah. And my other two sanctuaries activate. Yeah. So what do they do? Uh, my colony, colony gate gates. allows me to put a, the first acolyte from the discard pile back into my hand. Okay. Which nice. is... So back in your hand. Wow. Which is the oblivious wrecker, isn't it? Yeah. So that goes back in your hand. Yeah. And the deeps of my... Disney my last breath ones activate twice right yeah okay my go i get two crystals i now have four crystals which is a lot okay so i'm going to play the four-sighted guardian as an attacker in lane one because two crystals, it is zealous, so it comes into play active, and its genesis ability is that I can deal two damage to any of your sanctuaries. So my sanctuaries. Oh, oh your sanctuaries. My sanctuaries. Okay. So me, I may deal two damage to any of my sanctuaries. If I do, I can return any unit on the battlefield to its controller's hand. Oh. So, yeah, I'm going to deal two damage. To the pools of omniscience in order to return the outburst runner back to your hand. Okay. I think. No, hang on a minute. You've got an anthem of Phaeus there. 
and you have no last word abilities in play at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, no, we're going to put the Anthem of Phaeus back in your hand. Okay. There you go. Right. I've still got two crystals left. Um, I'm happy with that being done. I'm going to get attacked by this and this. This is the this is the big one. How can I deal damage to that? I can't. Ah, but what I can do is I can put a visionary reclaimer. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, Anthem of Phaeus has got Veil. Anthem of Phaeus has Veil. Okay, thank you very much. It does. Right, rewind that. Anthem so back in. I can't return that back to your hand. Uh, oh, nasty. Yeah, we've not really used Veil abilities before. Now we have. Hmm. So... Oh, actually, most of yours have got Veiled. Never mind. Let's return the Swarm Recruiter back to your hand that was in lane one. Okay. Right, which means... Uh, instead of doing what I did do, I'm going to do... I think I'd have preferred the, the other guy would have gone back in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's put some... Now, I kind of want to save these for a minute. But then I've got them. Okay, let's put uh, another visionary reclaimer back in as a defender in lane one doesn't cost any crystals okay i am done all of my sanctuaries are end of turn sanctuaries so it's attacking i deal three damage to you in lane one the depths of dusnia oh, have crumbled. oh that's a shame that's there the best go. one uh, my dogged infiltrator deals one damage to your anthem of Phaeus and dies Yep. So it's last word ability. I'm going to deal one damage to the sentient rocks in order to deal one damage to the colony gates. Yeah. So the colony gates have gone. Flip. As has the dogged infiltrator. Uh, and that's it for the attacks and that is the end of my go. So that goes there. I removed that. Um, so at the end of my turn, I can repair up to one damage on any of my sanctuaries. So I'm going to repair one to that one. Then I can deal one damage to any sanctuary. I'll deal one damage to that one. And then if this sanctuary is not at six, I get a crystal. And then this ability doesn't kick in yet because it's not active. There we go. I am done. Wow, this seems very powerful. Just After be able to do damage to my guys, even if I've got, well, my sanctuaries, even if I've got defenders in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Leonardo is saying, after unlocking the Champion's Echo's stretch goal, having them destroyed will be quite interesting, believe me. Okay, so there is... There is more to come if other stretch goals get unlocked. Right. Right. You'll go. Okay. Two crystals. Two crystals, I've got three now. Right. Yeah. While you're thinking, I'm just going to mention one thing that I learned this afternoon. Obviously, at this point, I've, well, I've almost got all four sanctuaries. And you might think, oh, hang on a minute, Paul. That's four extra abilities that you've got to remember while you're playing the game. Well, what they've done, and this is a clever bit of design, I think, is they have made sure that the four sanctuaries within each faction, their abilities trigger at the same time. So you'll notice all of my abilities here trigger at the end of the turn. Whereas the previous faction that I was playing, all of those abilities trigger at the start of the attack phase. So it means as a player, you only have basically one thing to remember, because as long as one of them is activated, you're going to do all of them. Uh, whereas yours activate at the end of your turn? Yeah. Uh, yours yeah. were end of turn stuff, weren't they? Yeah, at the end of your turn. And like sort of an ongoing one. And that's an ongoing one, yeah. So, yeah, that's quite cool. Because I asked them about that earlier on, because I thought that one of them should have been somewhere else, and they said, no, 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 it's easier if they're, if they're all the same, and I agree. Right okay. Then, what are you going to do? Mr. I'm going to play a, an Oblivious Wrecker. Oh, yeah, we know him. In lane one, attack. He's not going to last long, is he? Well, he <laughs> might. Is he? Okay. 
Uh, uh, I've only got three. Okay, so now I'm playing uh, a Scrounger of the Nest in defence in lane one. Scrounger of the Nest. Costs one crystal. And its Genesis ability is to resolve... Oh, nasty. <laughs> You're going to resolve the last word ability of the Oblivious Wrecker? Correct. Okay, and deal two damage to what? How much health has the guy in defence got? One. And does it got a last breath ability? It does not. Kill it. Be gone. Be gone. Yep. Okay. Next. Next. Uh, I'm getting a bit full, aren't I? Yeah. I'm playing the progeny of Phaeus. I don't know who this Phaeus chap is, but I don't like him. <laughs> He's got lots of followers. Yeah. Wow, so this got two crystals. This is a big yeah. one. Attack lane three. Attack lane three. And its Genesis ability is that you must destroy one of your units. Yeah, the the felt Oblivious Wrecker. Oblivious Wrecker gets destroyed. You deal two damage. To your oh, only... Ah, it's got Veil. Ah, it's got Veil, is it? Yeah, did you want to change that? Yeah, we need to remember Veil. Uh... Did you want to bring that into yeah, play or bring, not? Yeah, bring him back. Let's kill somebody else instead. Well, there isn't it's anybody not. else. Oh, you mean... Oh, of my own know. guys. Yeah. Let's guy the guy who's well, defending him. This one's not going to do anything. <laughs> no, but it stops you killing my cards. Neither is this one. Yeah. Yeah, get rid of the guy defending in lane one. Okay, that's gone. Uh, I've got no crystals left, have I? You nope. do not have any crystals. Can you place a blistering rider? Defence lane one. I can. Blistering rider. So zero crystals, defence lane one. Okay. And a blistering rider. Another wall. Attack lane four. Okay, you are full. I am currently full. Right. Wow. <laughs> I was doing well a minute ago. End of end of turn. Well, attack phase. Yes. Yeah. I mean, end you of deal, summoning. You deal one damage to me in lane two. Yeah. And then that's it. That's it. So everything ready, but next turn I'm in a world of hurt. Okay. End of turn abilities. What have you got for me? So I draw up to five. Yep. And again a crystal. Right, my go. It's not looking good. Hmm. Okay. Right. Oh dear. Okay, so. I think this is going to work. I'm going to spend one crystal to play the Grand Architect. Now, because we're doing Splendor a different way round than it suggests in the rulebook, we're going to have to interpret this card slightly because this says deal X damage to a unit where X is equal to the Splendor value of one of your sanctuaries. Okay. So this has actually got a Splendor value of one. This one's got one. This one's got two. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so think one, one, two, three. Two. Well, no, that that's actually oh, that, still that's still only on two. It's the still one two. On the end. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna I'm just gonna deal one damage anyway. Okay. And I'm gonna deal it to the oblivious wrecker, who is oblivious. Huh. So it deals two damage things. to a unit, and you can't choose my unit because of veil. So I'm afraid. Uh, did I take my two crystals? Um, I don't know if I took my two crystals or not. I'm going to take my two crystals. I don't think I did. You've only played one card so far, haven't you? Yeah, and that only cost one. So maybe I did. Maybe I did. Maybe the chat is just a little bit slow. Uh, okay. Splendor counts the icon too. So that, that was on two. That was on two. That was on three. And that's on three. 
Yeah, so it was three damage, but I only needed one damage. Okay, so kill my Blistering Rider in defence in lane one. This one. Okay, now that has a last word ability. Yep. You deal one damage to any Sanctuary. Yep, Sanctuary in lane two. Okay. Yours, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I think we're right now. I think I have two crystals still. Uh, so this, this one's a bit of a pain. And it's got Reaper as well. So that is a real pain. Um, so I'm going to play a Restoring Lymph mm -hmm. as a ritual, which repairs two damage to one of my sanctuaries and draws me a card. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to play the Tides of Retribution, uh -oh. which deals three damage to one Acolyte. God. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this one, this outburst runner. Uh huh. Oh no, he's got veil. I can't. No, you can't. Not allowed. Let's deal damage to. What's Ooh. got veil? The most things, haven't they? Yeah, a lot of your things have veil. Uh, I'm just going to deal one damage to this blistering rider at the front. That fella? Yeah, so in I, lane four. So I, can, so I can do a damage to a sanctuary? Oh, yes, you can. Yes, one damage sanctuary. to any sanctuary. Sanctuary in lane three. Sanctuary in lane three, okay. Um, then... That's the fella that's going to hurt. He's going to hurt a lot. Um, I should have done both on that sanctuary. Veil is a tricky one. Veil is a very tricky one. Um, okay, so I'm going to put the Expert of Restorations in as a defender in lane three. And when it comes into play, it's going to heal this up to full. Ugh. And then I'm going to play... Wow, these Anthems of Phaeus are really tough. They're 3-3 three, three with Veil. I mean, yeah, they're a super powerful unit. The downside is you Got destroy one, one of your units when they come into play, which for you is actually really good. <laughs> so... Hmm. This is a tricky one. I think I'm going to keep this card in hand. I'm going to keep it in hand. Right. That's my summoning phase done. So I'm going to attack. There's nobody in the way. The Sanctuary is destroyed, so you lose a card from the top of your deck. Gone. Okay, and then my go is over. This Splendor ability is removed. So at the end of my turn, I can repair up to one from any of my Sanctuaries. But before doing that, I'm going to do this one. I assume I can do these abilities in whatever order I want. Um, if they have to be done from left to right, tell us in the chat. But otherwise... I'm going to activate them in whatever order I want. So I get a card. I get a crystal. I can deal one damage to any sanctuary, which will be that one. Uh, and then I can repair one, which will be that one. So yeah, let me know if I can't do that. But otherwise, it's your go. And I'm going to give you your two crystals now. Yeah, because otherwise you're healing that up to full, aren't you? So therefore you don't get that ability exactly. mob if you do it the other way around. The difference is whether I get this card or not. That is the difference. Obviously, there's a couple of parts of the game is still on Kickstarter. The game is not out yet, so there is a couple of rules queries that we've got, which I'm assured, I'm assured will, that they'll they'll answer all of those when when the rulebook is finally done. Um, and playing games like this is a good test of the rulebook because certain questions are coming out, and they can put the answers to those questions in the rulebook. Mm -hmm. Right, metempsychosis. No answer yet to whether I can do it or not. So metapsychosis is two crystal ritual. Destroy any acolyte and its owner, its controller may search their deck for an acolyte, reveal it and add it to their hand. What would you like to destroy? The defending guy in lane three. The defending guy in lane three. Okay, so I can search my deck for any acolyte
Mm. I got lots. Uh, let's take out the Grand Architect. That's the one that deals X damage based on the Splendor. Uh, active player always chooses the order of abilities that trigger at the same time. Right, there we go. Thank you very much. I, I remember reading that in the rulebook now that you've mentioned it. So the Grand Architect okay. is going into my hand. Mm -hmm. Metamorph, metapsychosis, metempsychosis ritual goes to the discard pile. A voracious warder. Attack lane one. Voracious Warder, attack lane one, which is ze Zealous. Yeah. Okay, and that costs you your remaining crystal. Yeah. It's hard to kill you when you just keep healing everything up again. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> healing like there's no tomorrow. And be able I think to I've been lucky with my healing cards. One of my things off every turn as well. Yeah. Like, a bit, just a, yeah. Right, uh, that's it for summoning. Okay, so attacks. So you deal four damage to my sanctuary. Yep. This one attacks, deals one damage to my sanctuary. Uh, this one attacks and deals two damage to my sanctuary. There you go. Yeah. End of turn. You get a crystal? Uh, yep. And up to five cards. Okay, my go. So... I'm going to play the Grand Architect. Oh, I'll get me two crystals. I'll spend one of them to play the Grand Architect. So this has got a splendor value of four. So that deals four damage. He's strong, isn't he? It's a strong card for one. It is. Oh, and it's also, it's a unit. It's not a... It's not a ritual. Yeah. So where's that coming in? Uh... Oh, you've got all these pesky defenders. <laughs> <laughs> I need them. So... Yeah, I mean, he's kind of done his job. Ooh, ouch. Okay, I'm just going to put it in defense here. How many crystals you got? I got three. Yeah, it just cost you one. Did you have four previously? I had four. Yeah, I had two at the end of last turn. Hmm. Right, okay, so I'm going to play. <laughs> oh, don't giggle. Yeah, I'm going to play the Vengeful Root Eater. The purple people eater. in lane three. Cost two crystals. And when it comes into play, I deal one damage to each of my sanctuaries. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But. But. Then I play the Hermit Landscaper as an attacker in lane four. And, oh no, that's when it leaves play. So actually I'm going to put that as a defender in lane two. So the Hermit Landscaper is a defender in lane two. That cost me one do? crystal. Uh, and that's it. That's all I'm playing. So what does that guy do? You just put down. Um, when it when it is destroyed, I can repair up to one Aegis from each of my sanctuaries. Okay. Right. So my four sighted guardian attacks you, and you lose a card from the top of your deck. Gone. Um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Now my end of turn abilities. So I can repair up to one on any of my sanctuaries. So I'm going to repair one on this one i then get a card i get a crystal uh, and i can deal one damage to that so the source of the flow is gone i no longer get a crystal at the end you of no my turn. longer get a crystal at the end of your turn right your turn you get two crystals yep and you are up that fella you put in lane three has got four health has not he it does yes gosh that's quite a lot isn't it okay so, three crystals. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. So all of my all of my sanctuaries were on full health not long ago, but now, after me damaging them and you damaging them, 
You're going to heal them all up again, though, because my guy's going to attack that guy. Yeah. And kill that it. That was the plan. Okay. Uh, outburst runner. Lane outburst three, runner. attack. Lane three, attack. Uh, Cost you two crystals. No, wait a sec. Change your mind. Sorry. Mind. I'm doing that thing where we like, oh, it's going to attack the guy in attack. No, it's not. It's going to attack no, the guy not. in defense. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be careful of that, haven't you? Okay, in which case, metempsychosis. Metempsychosis again? Yeah. Now, what did that do? Destroy kill that? Kill them. Yeah. Yep. Which one do you want to kill? The big fellow in lane three. Oh, so that deals one damage to each of my sanctuaries. That's, yeah, he's good, but... Is, that, is, is, is he got a, a last yeah. breath of that, has he? Yeah. So okay, well, wait a sec. Play, I, I, undo. Undo, undo. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realise that was the last breath ability as well. Yeah, it's got a last word ability. Okay, undo. Yep. You've not played Metempsychosis yet. Oh, I'm playing Preceptor of the Fury first. Preceptor of the Fury. Yep. Which, okay. Where's that attack. going to come in? Lane 4 attack. Lane 4 attack, costing you one crystal. Yep. Resolve the mm of any unit on the battlefield. Oh, that's that mine. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, dear. I didn't realise that was a, a thing of last yeah. breath as well. Yeah. So you, right. This is a really bad deck to play against your deck. because, <laughs> Well, I shouldn't have played that card. That was my mistake. I, w I would not play this card again. Especially against my guys. Against yeah. your deck. Like so now, decks, fine. now I'm going to metem psychosis. Now you metem psychosis for two crystals. Yeah, on you that guy. That, which means that goes, that goes, and that goes, and I've suddenly lost three sanctuaries in one turn. And <laughs> that one's almost dead. Wow, what a comeback! Right, I can search <laughs> my deck for anything I want. Can make all oh. your sanctuaries alive again. Oh dear. Oh, there's another one of them in my deck. I will not be putting that one into play. Um, <laughs> I will be... I will be taking... It's an Acolyte, isn't it? I will be taking a... A 3-4 Acolyte. Ooh. Okay, in your done. Right, attack phase. I've been advised in the chat to stop hitting myself. Yes. <laughs> okay, so your outburst runner does one damage to this. I deal three back. They both die then? They both die, uh, and I get to repair up to one on each of my sanctuaries, although I only now have one sanctuary. Uh, that's mine, that's yours. And then your voracious warden attacks. Warder. Gets yep. rid of one of your cards, yeah. And I lose a card. Okay. Are you done? Yep. Right. So I still draw up to five, but I don't get a crystal. Yes. Okay. So here's the situation. I get two crystals. Um, yeah, we have a problem there. And we have a problem here. Oh, that's very, very risky. If I do that, that is horrendously risky. But it might just work. Okay, so <laughs> I want to spend two crystals to play the four-sighted guardian as an attacker in lane three, which is Zealous. Okay. When it, when it comes into play as a Genesis ability, I can deal two damage to any of your sanctuaries. I will. Oof. If okay. I do, I return a unit to your hand. Oh, no, hang on, hang on. It's got Veil. Ah! <laughs> Change that. Uh, I was going to win then. Yeah, you weren't going to win. Oh, it's got. I was. <laughs> I have a way of dealing you two damage. Um, oh man! How do I get rid of that thing? Veil seems quite strong, doesn't it? Veil is very good. Okay, so I'm just going to spend three crystal crystals and put the Son of the Flood as an attacker in lane three. And that's 
Oh, this is too risky. No, this is too, I can't do that. That's way too risky. I need to put uh, the impartial balancers as a defender in lane four first for one crystal. Um, then I will also put the impartial balancers into lane one as a defender. And Bio as well. And then I think I'm done. Okay, so attacks. I have an attack of two, so you lose the top card of your deck. Yep. And that's it. These <coughs> cards ready. I get a card for my pool of omniscience after I've drawn up to my hand size. Is it after? No, it's before, isn't it? Which one? Actually, I did that early on. I, I did that wrong early on. Yeah, that's interesting. So we need a rules query on this. This pools of omniscience. According to the end of turn phase, um, you resolve all of your end of turn abilities and effects in any order. Then you choose and discard cards and then you draw cards from your deck. So this is actually drawing me a card. But then I won't draw a card. So it's not actually as useful as I thought. It isn't drawing me an extra card. No. No. You draw a card um, before you draw up to your hand size, which is, what's the point of that? It means I could throw it away if I wanted to, but yeah, we need to no, check the wording right. on that because it does seem quite weak. Um, okay, right, well. How much health has your defending guys got? Are they three? Three, three, uh, these two are three and these two are two. Yeah, three is a problem. And yes, uh, Kremil92 is saying that escalated quickly. It did. I was in such a strong position with loads of health and then all of a sudden I played one card which I should not have played. <laughs> right, you'll go. Two crystals. Can you do it? This turn? Mm, don't think so. <laughs> Your guy in attack in lane one. Yep. How much attack has he got? Attack three, two health. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm playing a merciless chieftain. Yeah. In defence in lane one. You've still got your leader as well, don't forget. Oh yeah, of course I have. Merciless <laughs> chieftain. Yeah. Defence lane one. Two crystals. Yep. Okay. And then I'm playing an eruption catalyzer. An eruption catalyzer. That sounds painful. Does, doesn't it? Is that okay. curry, like, curry last night? He's going in attack in lane two. Attack lane two. Right, okay. Are you done? Yes. Right, so this attacks, deals two damage to me, bounces yeah. off. I deal one damage to you, bounces off. Uh, this one attacks, deals two damage to me, bounces off. I deal one damage to you, bounces off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, end of your turn. Yep, draw back up to five. Draw back up. So Ooh, cards, running long cards. Is, yeah, this is um, turning into a bit of a war of attrition. Um, yeah, if we could get an answer in the chat for this card here, that would be that would be great. Um, now, I can do that, and I can do that. Yeah, it, veil, veil is such a problem. But I'm just going to th spend three crystals to put the Son of the Flood as an attacker in lane three. Okay. And then... I'm going to play uh, the Dogged Infiltrator as a defender in lane two. Yeah. Which is actually zealous. <coughs> Uh, do I want to do that or do I want to put it here? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put it there. It's a little bit of a risk, but I'm going to put it as an attacker. Okay. Okay, so attacks from left to right. My four-sighted guardian attacks your merciless chieftain. Yep. And we kill each other. Yep. 
Okay, and then you have a last word ability. Yeah. To destroy any acolyte on the battlefield. Defender. Oh, he's got Veil, isn't he? Which one? Defender guy in lane four. Defender guy in lane four has Veil. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? Do you want to kill the big thing that I just summoned? Yeah. Got the, the attack guy in lane three. Yeah. So Brett is asking, what's the difference between drawing a card at the end of your turn and increasing your hand size? Well, increasing <coughs> your hand size means that when you draw cards, you will draw back up to your hand size. It's all about the order. That's the question. So we have here the current rules in front of us. And it says, in the end of turn phase, resolve these actions in order. And step four is you resolve the end of turn abilities. This is an end of turn ability to draw a card. And then step five, choose any number of cards and discard them from your hand. And step six, draw cards from your deck until you reach your hand size. So therefore, by, by that wording, this pool of omniscience, it's just getting you to draw a card slightly earlier than you would have done anyway. Paul, did you see Leonardo's response in I the haven't. chat? I haven't. I haven't. Ah, for the pull of Omni Science, it's a prototype issue. Treat the message said your hand limit is fine. Okay, thank you very much. So that, that wording has changed, and I mowed a card. I'm going to take it I now. I bet it's a really good one. <laughs> it, oh, it actually would have been. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really good. Never mind. Um, I think we're done. So I'm going to draw two cards. I'm, I'm running out of cards in my deck. We're getting to that point. Five cards in my deck. Your go. Two crystals. Yeah, now I think I'm in trouble. Yeah. Potentially. Um... I'm not going to play any cards. Okay, right. So attacks. Yep. So this one attacks. We bounce off each other. Uh, this one attacks and does two damage, so I lose a card. Uh, and this one and this one bounce off each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. End of turn. Yeah. You all done? Have you done your card thing? Uh, yeah, I've got five cards in my hand. I'm you playing. Got five cards? Okay, right. My go then. <sighs> Interesting. What are you playing at? What indeed, are you playing at? Um, well, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> or do we? Yes, I think we do. I think. Oh no, it's got veil. Oh. I hate Vale. <laughs> I really do. Okay, so we're going to bring into play the Master of Symmetry mm -hmm. with the two crystals that I haven't taken yet as an attacker in lane three. Now, this has got Reaper and it also has the ability that when it comes into play, I deal one damage to any Sanctuary and repair up to one damage on another of your sanctuaries. So I'm going to deal one damage to you and heal one off me. Oh, okay. Um, now, do I want to play... How many cards have you got in your deck? Two. You've only got two cards in your deck? <laughs> yeah. This okay. might be why I didn't play any cards. So let's just refresh ourselves of the rules about. <laughs> so what is it? What is it exactly? If you, I think we, it's if you go to draw a card. Let me get the rules. Yeah, we, we haven't we haven't ever got to this bit before, and it might be very important. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, if you have no, no cards left in your deck, you must choose one of your sanctuaries to be destroyed automatically. Right, so that's at the beginning of your turn. Yeah. And it is about to be the beginning of your turn, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's your turn at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but if I can get rid of those two cards from your deck, I win. I'll be in, yeah. In which case, if you let me take that back, I'm not going to play that. Okay. 
So now that we know that, I'm actually going to spend those two crystals instead to play the Foresighted Guardian. Uh, is it something which gets rid of cards in my deck? That's just not fair. So <laughs> It comes into play in lane four as an attacker. And when it comes into play as a Genesis ability, I may deal two damage to any of my sanctuaries. And if I do, I can return any unit on the battlefield to its controller's hand. So I'm going to put the Perceptor of Fury back into your hand. Okay. Okay. In fact, I didn't need to do that. I could have just played it there. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Um, oh, I'm still only dealing one. Oh, it hasn't worked. <sighs> okay, it hasn't quite worked. Uh, never mind, I've done it now. <laughs> I have oh, done I it now. Right, attacks. So my yeah. Dogged Infiltrator attacks your Anthem of Phaeus, and I die. Uh -huh. You may deal one damage to any Sanctuary and one damage to one of your Sanctuaries. I don't think I want to at this stage. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But now I attack you in lane four and you lose the top card of your deck. Ouch. Right, I am done. So, okay. I get a card. Your go. You get two crystals. Yep. This is close. You have one card in your deck. How many cards have you got left in your deck? Ah, uh, loads. How many have you got left in your deck? Three. 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 Uh, about the attack phase attack on each lane is simultaneous all units attack at the same time and then each defend at the same time and then each last word ability triggers if the case happens okay uh, when we played the game this afternoon we were told that units attack in order from left to right so that's the way we've been doing it for this for this stream but according to this all units attack at the same time okay Okay, outburst right. runner, defense, lane outburst four. Outburst runner in defense. Where? Lane, lane four. Lane four. That costs you the two crystals that you just gained. Yeah. That's it. Okay, but that's going to be enough, I think, possibly. So this bounces off this. Uh, this, I lose a card. And this bounces off this. Okay. You done? Yep. Right, my go. Cards in your deck? Uh, one. Are you, are you not just about to draw that one? No, nope, because I, I I had six cards in my deck. Because oh. you put one in my hand. Oh, of course. Which was of course, nice of, of course, of course. Right. Uh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Well, let's... I need a way of activating units. And I don't have them. So I'm just going to spend, I'm going to gain two crystals and then I'm going to spend those two crystals to play the Master of Symmetry in lane one. Oh, um, this is so close. This is, so close. This is very close. I am then going to play a Foresighted Elder as a defender in lane two, which is free. And I'm not going to do the ability. It's optional. Um, and then, yeah, I'm done so i attack i deal three damage to you and you yep. kill me back with your reaper ability yep okay and then this red is and i draw unfortunately i draw Up two times yeah so i think that's a win for you just because <laughs> if you don't kill me this turn i lose next turn yeah because yeah. even if you hit me, I draw a card, which I've still yeah. got in my deck. Oh, that was very, very <laughs> close, wasn't it? Doesn't get any closer than that. It doesn't get any closer. We run each other pretty much out of cards. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what you do on your turn, because then at the start of my turn, I have to destroy this sanctuary, and we are one all. Now, that, took, that, that took an hour. I thought that was going to be a quicker game. Well, games that run out of cards normally take longer, don't That's they? That's true. Now... We did say the stream was going to be two hours, but we also said that we were going to play three games tonight. So, Rick, are you happy staying? Yeah, I'm sure right, probably Victoria's okay. going to bed. <laughs> right, well, we're, we're in for the third and final game this evening. So how was that deck, playing that deck a second time? 
It's good, different this time because last time I did loads of combos, didn't I? Like a you ten did. card go. This time I didn't get that chance to do that really, and I didn't get my champion out either. No, you didn't. Did you forget? No, I just didn't. I've had other things to do. I felt okay. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed playing that deck because it did play very differently. Um, not having many zealous cards meant I had to set myself up, and then obviously the healing. Um, Healing my own sanctuaries was was interesting. The, the the big mistake is that card in that deck, which is a powerful yeah. card. Do not play that card when you're playing against the cross. Because I can just trigger your last breath and kill you. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're enjoying it so far. We've got one game left. Thank you to everybody for joining in, and thank you for everybody staying with us. We are now going to do game number three, which is the wool. Which look weird. You got funny helmets on. <laughs> I think they are pretty weird. Okay, and these two decks are apparently a bit trickier to play. These are more difficult than the others. So, we will see. Uh, and I am playing the Antar. So let's set mine up first. I have my champion, uh, which at the end of a turn... So this deck, the Antar, is all about exhausting units. Okay. And at the end of my turn, I can exhaust a unit. We then have... Oh, gosh. That's not going to come in for a while. Yeah, so I have four sanctuaries. Wow. But the biggest one has got five. Uh, yeah, it's Splendor needs to get to five. So that one needs three. That one needs three. And that one needs two. Right, health. So that one's six. Four. Six. And four. Right, so... Uh, and there's my deck. Right, you have Tal Dun, Sunset of the Wool Champion. Yep. Uh, Fella with a bottle and a book. Yeah, that's the guy. Um, you've got lots of blank cards. Again, the artwork is still being worked on for your cards. Right, it might have been done now, but it wasn't done at the time this prototype was printed. So, you've got the Muttering Ice Canyons which is interesting because that only requires one one technically one splendor yeah uh, then you have a four uh, sorry a two right so yours are in that order right let's get you some splendor cubes i'm glad it's one each going into the last game yes <laughs> so three, four, two on that one right aegis four on that one Four on that one, six on that one, and six on the last one. Right, so as the loser of the previous game, me, I will draw my cards and then decide whether I want to go first or second. Do we want to have a quick chat about what our things do, what our sanctuaries? Um, sure. So my sanctuary is in order from left to right is once again these are all just once they're activated your units in this lane gain one attack mm, okay my next one the palace of the truth at the end of your turn you may exhaust any enemy unit in attack position on a lane different from this one mm. the third one the port of savlar uh, at the end of your turn you may return any of your units from the battlefield to your hand Okay. And the Relic of the Eye, which isn't going to be activated for quite a while, at the end of your turn, destroy any enemy acolyte on a lane different from this one. Wow, so just kill my acolytes? Yeah. Nice. Right. What do yours do from your left. left? So my Muttering Ice Canyons, at the beginning of your turn, each player discards a card. At the beginning of your turn? Yep. Okay, yep. The Dizzying Bridges of Alithman. At the beginning of your turn, you may reveal the top card of your deck, then put it in your discard pile. If that card is an Acolyte, gain one crystal. Okay. Uh, the Vault of the Collectors. At the beginning of your turn, you may discard an Acolyte from your hand and deal one damage to any Sanctuary. Right, okay. And the Twilight Caves. At the beginning of your turn, you may deploy any unit from your discard pile on a lane different from this one at no cost. Right, okay. Here we go then. 
Uh, they do have a mulligan in this, by the way. Oh, right, okay. <clears throat> what is one, less car- one less one card. One less card. Yeah. Okay. So we've not been doing that, but there are mulligan rules included in the game. Which is good. I like mulligan rules. Okay, well, I'm going to have a look at my cards first and then decide if I'm going first or second. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go second. So, you first. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Right, first you work this. So, I'm playing in defense on lane four, a collector's mentor. Collector's Mentor, no crystal cost, as a defender in lane four. It's a zero two creature that when it leaves play, you get two crystals. Okay? Yep. And then I am playing the Breeze of Taldun. Yep. It's breezy. Crystal. Attack in lane four. Attack lane four. Okay, done. Mm hmm. No attacks. Cards ready. Draw up the hand size. Splendor comes off. What's that doing? I got the wrong cube there. Uh, so that comes off, that comes off, that comes off, and that comes off. So your first ability is now already active. So yep. we're going to have to be discarding cards. Okay, right. My go. I get two crystals. Uh, right. Hmm. Don't play your champion too early, Paul. Don't play your champion too early. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be attacking for three. And it has a veil. Okay. So I am going to play the... Untangled Cell Sword in lane two, and it, it's fierce, so it has to be an attacker. Mm -hmm. Cannot be a defender. Uh, it's got Veil, not Veil, is it? It has Veil, yeah, and it cost a crystal. Uh, I am then going to play. Um, Hmm. I'm then going to play the Enraged Corruptor as a defender in lane four, which has Veil and Reaper. How rude. Okay, my go is done. I have no attacks. My card's ready. I draw two cards and I remove a Splendor from each of my Sanctuaries. Your go. You get two Crystals. Mm-hmm. So, answers in the chat for those people still with us. Who do we think is going to win the last game? Is it going to be Rick or is it going to be Paul? Yeah, let's get some messages going in the chat. Right, Let in the know beginning. That you are still here and watching. Yeah, at the beginning of your turn, each player discards a card. Right, yes. So, <laughs> we both have to discard a card. Um, um, shall I tell you what I'm discarding so you can put it in there? Sure. But... Oh no! Only, well, yeah, I suppose uh, it yeah. will work, won't it? Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm definitely keeping that. Oh, I want them all. Um, I'm definitely okay. keeping that. A glacier warlord. I'm actually going to get rid of that. So you're discarding the Glacier Warlord. Yeah, it's good, but they're all quite okay. good. Glacier Warlord is discarded. Okay, now I'm putting a Breeze uh, breeze of Taldun yep. in defence in lane two. 
For one crystal? In defense on lane two for one crystal. Yep. Okay. And and mm, uh, have a start of them. It's not gonna be enough, is it? Uh, and then I'm putting out my champion. Oh you are, right. So for one crystal. Yeah. Tal Dunn comes into play and what are you gonna do with it? He's going in <laughs> attack in lane two. So this has got an ongoing ability that at the end of your turn, if at least three acolytes were put into your discard pile from anywhere this turn, you can deal a damage to a sanctuary. Yeah. It's also got Veil and Reaper. Okay. You done? Yep. So attacks. Ta so the Breeze of Taldun attacks. Does three yeah. damage to me. I deal two back. Both die. Both die. The fact that I've got Reaper doesn't matter because you were dead anyway. And then that readies and you draw back up to your hand size and Splendor comes off. So you have another ability now active, which is the Dizzying Bridges of Alithman. Alithman. Yeah. And unfortunately only two cards went to discard pile, two acolytes, yeah. so I can't damage the sanctuary. Okay, so... Oh, man, these... This is not going to work. This is not going to work. <laughs> right, this is interesting. Oh, that should be ready. This is really interesting. I'm trying to work out... I mean, they did tell us that these decks were hard. <laughs> yeah. And I'm now trying to work out how these combos go together. Um, right, what's going to happen here? I'm going to kill you, you're going to kill me. Oh, but if I do that, and then that... Mm. Mm. And that's got Veil. Oh. There's a lot of units with Veil in this game. Yeah, it's because the rituals are strong, aren't they? Normally, the like, kill are, anyone. Yeah. None of this is going to work. None of this is going to work at all. So... And the problem is, I'm going to draw back up to four, but then at the start of your turn, I'm going to have to discard a card. Yep. So, I'm just going to put the Ruthless Trader into play as an attacker on lane three. It has a coming into play ability of gaining two crystals if at least an enemy unit is exhausted, but there isn't one. Good. Yeah, not good. Um, <laughs> and I think that's it. No, no, it's not it. No, <laughs> I'm going to play. I'm going to play Touch of the Gifted to activate it. Oh, okay. And then in the attack phase, these two attack. I deal two damage to your thing, and these two kill each other. Okay. I believe. Right. Yep. Now, I now draw up to four. I lose a blue cube from each of these. So all of my units in lane one have now got plus one attack. Um, and it's your go. You get right. two crystals, and at the start of the turn, we both have to discard a card. Correct. I'm discarding an exor inexorable recruiter. Well, I want to keep all of mine now. <laughs> hmm. After what I've just drawn. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to get rid of... Oh. I'm going to get rid of Revenge of the Sisterhood, even though I like the artwork. Right, what have you got rid of? Uh, inexorable Recruiter. Inexorable Recruiter. Which is a shame, because... Yep. 
Yeah. So Paolo's in the chat and he said, this is hard. Wool and Antar decks are difficult to master, but they give powerful options if exploited at the right time. Well, yeah. let's try. Let's, let's try. Let's hope for the right time. Yeah. Right. Your First thing I'm going to do is I'm playing Verdict of the Ice. Verdict of the Ice. Okay. And where's that going? It's a ritual. Oh, it's a ritual. Draw up to three cards and then discard two cards from your hand. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Before that, I've got yep. the Sanctuary, uh, have I the Dizzying Bridges of Alithman. Oh, you do? What does that do? Beginning of turn, you may reveal the top card of your deck, then put it in your discard pile. If that card is an acolyte, gain a crystal. Okay. It is. You doing it? So you yeah, it's it. a Le Legions of Alithman. Okay. So Legions of Alithman is in your discard pile. And now you're playing Verdict of Verdict the Ice. Guys. Drawing three. You draw three cards. Yep. And then... And discard two from your hand. What are you discarding? You're going to be milling through your deck very quickly. I am, aren't I? Uh, Seeker of the Collectors and yep. Tamer of the Masks. Seeker of the Collectors and... Tamer of the Masks. God, Tamer I'm getting masks. this deck in like three turns. Yep. Okay. But now... Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the end of the turn. My Here guy kicks it. Right, I'm playing the Ravenous Horde. The Ravenous Horde. Yep, in, two crystals. In attack, attack at lane three. The Ravenous Horde comes as an attacker on lane three, and the Genesis ability is each enemy unit on this lane takes damage equal to the number of units in your discard pile. Three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> He's only got one health. <laughs> Poor it's lad. Now it's now dead it's dead yes okay anything uh, else yep a cursed enforcer is going to attack in lane four cursed enforcer attack lane four and it has to be attacked because it's fierce yep okay done yes so attacks your champion attacks this sanctuary deals it one damage Peek. yep, yep. Uh, right. But then, at the end of my turn, well, yep. was, uh, if at least three acolytes put in your discard pile from anywhere during the turn, you may deal one damage to a sanctuary. What do you want to damage? The um, uh, one in two. Okay, the price of truth. Right. Yeah. Your go's done. I'll let you do your cards. Uh, my vault of the collectors isn't open, is it? No. No. It is now. Yeah. Which is at the beginning of your turn, yeah. So that yeah. is now active. Right. My go. I just got me two crystals. Thing is, I've only got three cards. This is the problem with your deck. You're making me discard cards. So, if I've got this right, which I might not have done... Yeah, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you lots of crystals. <laughs> Don't really want to give you lots of crystals. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I don't. Right, I am going to play Sisterhood Matriarch as an attacker in lane four, and it's zealous cost me one crystal and when it comes into play I exhaust all of the units on this lane including oh. enemy units and even ones with veil oh. okay cheeky does that then, mean my defense guy can no longer defend uh, that's a very good point I assume that exhausted defenders cannot fight but we haven't actually read that have we let's have a look let's see if we get a message in the chat before we find it um, where would it be? Where would it be? Attack. Uh, and it, no, it needs to be an active unit in defending position. So there yes, you go. There you go. It is in the rules. I'm now going to play a ruthless trader for zero cost, and it's going to go here as an attacker in lane three. And when it comes into play, I get two crystals because there is 
an enemy unit exhausted. Yeah. And five crystals. You're getting lots of crystals, not me. I am. I am then going to play for no crystals. Um, a defender in lane two. And when that comes into play, I can activate any unit. So I will activate the Ruthless Trader. And then for two crystals, I'm going to bring into play my champion, Vatep. Uh-oh. Uh, Judge of the Antar. And it's going to come into play... And it's going to come into play as a attacker in lane one. What does he do then? Uh, it has an ongoing ability that at the end of my turn I can exhaust a unit and it's got Reaper. Now, remember, everything in this lane, for me, has plus one attack. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. So, attacks. These two attack, deal damage to your things. So there's two off that, two off that. Your dizzying bridges of uh, Alithman has been destroyed. Right, end of the turn. I remove a Splendor from each of my Sanctuaries, so these two abilities now kick in. And I can now start doing a lot of fancy things. Ah. A lot. Specifically, let's draw me four cards. I can exhaust a unit. Now, I can't exhaust something with Veil, can I? I guess. Uh, no, I no. wouldn't have thought so. No. So I'll exhaust this one. Uh, I can exhaust an enemy unit in attack position on a different lane to this one. Okay. So this is at the end yeah. of your turn, is it? Yeah. Uh, I can return one of my units from the battlefield to my hand. <coughs> so I'm going to take back Sister Matriarch. Uh, in fact, that happened before I drew up. So I haven't drawn up yet. At the end uh, of your turn, though, surely, is that... Yeah, but end of turn is step four in the end of turn things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in, the, in the things to do at the end of your turn, step four is resolving the abilities. Step six is drawing more cards. So I now draw only two cards. Okay, and it is yep. your go. Flip. So you get two crystals, and we both have to discard a card. Yeah. I like this deck. This deck is nice. It's clever. Um, yeah. Veil is the problem. And the okay. The problem is Veil. Some discarding an inexorable recruiter again yeah i'm gonna discard um inscrutable queens so what were you discarding uh inexorable inexorable recruiter inexorable recruiter gone right your go at the beginning of turn you may discard an acolyte from your hand and deal one damage to any sanctuary where's that Oh, is that the Vault of the Collectors? Vault of the Collectors, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to? Uh... Um... So the only two people <laughs> active in the chat, apart from the publisher, is Christine and Brett. Christine's voting for you and Brett's voting for me. So there you go. We have one vote each. If you are Perfect. watching on YouTube, please pop, a, please pop a message in the chat. It's always good to uh, to see people in there. Right, okay. Uh, yes, I'm going to. Okay. I'm discarding the Tamer of the Masks. So Tamer of the Masks goes from your hand to deal one damage to a Sanctuary. Yep. Sanctuary uh, number two. Palace of the, of the Truth, yep. Mm -hmm. so that's going to fall soon-ish. And I'm playing a ritual. Right, what are you playing? Last Breath. Uh, last Breath. Discard any of your Acolytes, then destroy any Acolyte. Okay. So I'm discarding Chilling Freak. <laughs> Chilling Freak. Yeah. Yeah. To, to destroy, destroy the guy defending in lane two. Yeah, the Fervent Speaker. Okay. Nice. <laughs> no more cards left. I was going to say, you're, you're burning through your cards. I know, I'm going to die just from the deck death. Just I'm from sure. the deck, yeah. 
Especially if you're exhausting me so I can't do anything. Exactly. So your champion attacks and kills the Palace of Truth. It does. Yeah. And uh, now it's going to be the end of my turn. I have discarded three so I can do a damage to another you can. Yes. place. Uh, how much damage does your champion do? Uh, two because he's in this lane. Okay. Normally one, uh, but it's two because of that. I'm going to do a damage to your one in lane four. The Relic of the Eye. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have removed the last Splendor from your final Sanctuary, which is at the beginning of your turn, you may deploy <coughs> any unit from your discard pile on a lane different from this one at no cost. Wow. It's a free unit yeah. every turn. Yeah. Gosh. From a discard pile. <laughs> I go? Yes. Right, I get two crystals. I'm on five. I got loads of crystals. Um, now, I think we might do this again because it worked so well last time. It was mean. It was. So I'm going to bring into play the Sisterhood Matriarch for one crystal and exhaust these two. And then a that's brick. going to attack and that's going to kill that. So that's that sorted. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring into play the Hand of Vetep, which is an ongoing ability. It's a rather large lady uh, <laughs> with a dress that isn't covering up very much. Um, and at the end of my turn, I can deal one damage to a Sanctuary. Oh, dear. I'm going to put that here as a defender in lane one. It's probably not going to last very long. Um, I'm then going to play Revenge of the Sisterhood. Deal X damage to any unit where X is equal to the number of exhausted units on the battlefield, which is three. Two? Oh, the three. Ravenous, you're one. Yeah. So the Ravenous Horde in lane three. <coughs> three damage. That's just me. It is. Okay. Are we doing some attacks? Yeah. Right, so my champion deals two damage to this one. <coughs> uh, yep. My ruthless trader attacks and forces you to lose the card from the top of your deck. Which is crap, because I don't like that. And the Sisterhood Matriarch attacks and destroys the Muttering Ice Canyons. Mutter, mutter, mutter. There you go. Gone. End of the turn. So, at the end of the turn I can exhaust a unit. I can't because it's got Veil and all of the other ones are already exhausted. At the end of the turn, we may deal one damage to any Sanctuary. Let's deal one damage to that. Um, at the end of your turn, you may return all any units from the battlefield to your hand. I'll take that one back. That's not my hand, that's your deck. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm going to remove that. So, I now draw three cards. You can just carry on playing her and keep on exhausting my people. That's just not fair. Yeah. Yeah, return it back to my hand, put it again, exhaust your units, bring it back. Rinse and repeat. Right, your go. So Paolo says, remember the ability of the world champion. I did do that damage. He did, yes, he did do it. Yeah. Uh, right, right. Beginning of turn, I no longer discard. We no longer discard, discard cards. Yeah. But we... But we are, do get to deploy any unit from discard pile on a lane different to this one at no cost. Yeah. So let's look at what I want to discard. The fact that you've just got them exhausted all my people. I did. Is a pain. Absolutely did. Okay. okay. I'm going to discard that one. I'm going to play a Glacier Warlord. Are you discarding first? Uh, I don't have to. This is Twilight Caves. Oh, no. The, the one that makes you discard a card is gone. Yeah. Right. Sorry. So you, you, so you don't have to discard a card either. No, no, no. Right. But you're activating the ability of the Twilight Caves. Yep. To play. From my discard pile, a Glacier discard Warlord. Pile, a Glacial Warlord in a lane different to that one at no yep. cost. Yep. Lane okay. three. Lane three, attack, attack or defense. Attack. attack. And it's zealous, so it comes into and play ready. It activates the units on its flanks. Oh. 
Okay. Thus activating that fella. Yeah. That fella is activated. He is. Right then. Next. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to play... I've got five crystals still, haven't I? I'm going to play crystals, yeah. the Legions of Alithman. Yep. He's going in defence in lane three. Okay, so when it comes uh, no. into play... Let's go defence, sorry, defence lane one. Defence lane one. When it comes into play, you may pay two crystals. And if you do, you can deploy any unit from your discard pile. Doing that? Yeah, thought you would. What are you going uh, to deploy? The inexorable recruiter. Yeah. Where's that coming in? Defence in lane three. Okay. Nice. This Your deck's all about graveyard manipulation, isn't it? Yeah. And then... I'm going to put the Cursed Enforcer. Yeah, from your hand. Uh, yeah. How much health is the person? Oh, I've only got one, isn't it? But they've got well, two you attack. Can only put it, you can only put it here because it's fierce. Yeah. So you've yeah, got yeah, yeah. to be in the front lane. Yeah, put, put them there. Okay. And <laughs> I may as well fill everybody up. I'm going to put an Ice Inquirer. In defence in lane in, two. In the last spot. So everything is full. Uh-huh. Uh, and when this comes into play, you can draw a card and then discard a card. Yep. So what are you discarding? I'm discarding the verdict of the ice. Okay. How many cards in your deck? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, attacks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so this one attacks this for two. This one attacks this for two. Mm -hmm. This one forces me to lose the top card of my deck. And that one is exhausted. Okay, you are done. I have three turn. things in my ac acolytes in my deck. Okay, I trust you. So I, do a, I do a damage. I'm pretty sure yeah. I did anyway. Or maybe I did damage quite relic of the last eye. breath. Last breath was the last one, so I've had two acolytes in my deck. Swizz. So you only did two? Yeah, that's a shame. I was about to kill that relic of the eye. So you're just about yeah. to get it. Okay, so you didn't manage to get three acolytes in there in your turn. No. Right. I do draw back up to four. Oof. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I get two crystals. I have a plethora of crystals. Um, well, I think we're still going to do this. Yeah, I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to play the Sisterhood Matriarch here because it exhausts all of the units, including ones with Veil. So that's those two exhausted. Um, I'm then going to play the... Um, the Gifted Blade Dancer as a defender in lane three. Now, the Blade Dancer has an ongoing ability that... If there are at least two exhausted units on the battlefield, this unit has an extra two attack. Okay. Um, I'm then going to play the Inscrutable Queens, which we found out this is actually a typo, because this remember, this is a prototype. So this is actually a Genesis ability, that when it comes into play, I get one card for each exhausted enemy unit on this lane. So I get two cards. Okay. And then, <laughs> oh, nice. No, not nice. Yes, very nice. Um, then I'm going to play the Fearless Slayer as an attacker in lane four. And when it comes into play, I get one crystal for each enemy exhausted unit on the battlefield. So it cost me three to play. And you get two back. I get two back. It cost you one. And then I'm going to play the Hand of Vatep in defence on lane four. <laughs> all full again. We're all full. Right, okay. Need a board so, wipe. My attacks. I have my champion, which attacks and hits that. We've both got Reaper. Yep. So we both die. 
Okay, so my champion is out of the game. Your card goes to your discard pile. Uh, this attacks and deals two damage to your sanctuary. Uh, this attacks and does two damage to you. Oh god, that's tough. <laughs> and you deal three damage back to me. All right, so that's dead. I didn't realise how tough that was. Um, done. So all my cards ready. I remove this, and now I have some end of turn abilities. Yeah. I have that one and that one, which is both one damage to any sanctuary. Oh. So I'm going to deal one to there and one to there. Uh, I have this one, which I can return to my hand. And I have, at the end of your turn, destroy any enemy acolyte on a lane different from this one. Do I want to destroy that? No, we're going to destroy this. We're going to destroy this cursed enforcer that's in lane one. Boom, dead. And then I draw two cards. I'm going to need to lie down after this. This is very tense. Um, I think it's your <laughs> I think it is my go. You have two crystals. We're getting right. near the end now because you're running out of cards in your deck, aren't you? I am. Um, yeah, yeah, worryingly. I might have this one, he says, with slight overconfidence. Okay, so at the beginning of your turn, you may discard an acolyte from your hand and deal one damage to any sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Seeker of the Collectors is being discarded. Seeker of the Collectors is being discarded from your hand into your discard pile to deal one damage to... Relic the of the Eye? With... Yep. Yes, that's gone. Didn't like that one. Yep. Right. Okay, do your worst. Cards in hand? <laughs> Three. Three. Cards in your deck? Four. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, you may deploy any unit from your discard pile on a lane different yeah. to this one at no cost. But I've got oh, no. There isn't one. I've got nothing in there. Yeah, you can't do it. Okay. Uh, but no, but can I can I replace units? Oh, you can replace. Yeah. 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 Do you want to replace something? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Okay. What do you want to replace? And with what? Let's replace what we got. I've got nothing with any last breath things, have I? Go for an inexorable recruiter. Yeah, they're tough, aren't they? In the fence in lane two. So replacing your ice inquirer with an inexorable recruiter. Yeah. Okay, so that's two cards entered your discard pile this turn yep. yep but i don't want to spend too many cards because i've yeah i don't want to draw cards yeah but uh, i'm parallel is saying yes you can still deploy by replacing a unit yeah yeah oh god i'm gonna have to gonna have to do it aren't i let's play a chilling freak Okay, Chilling Freak comes into play, costing you two crystals. Yeah. In attack in lane one. Attack of lane one. Okay. And that has plus one attack for each unit in your discard pile. Wow. <laughs> Super attacking, yeah. Absolutely massive, yeah. Okay. Any more? Yes. Yeah, no, that's it. Okay, so attacks. Yep. So that deals two damage to this, which kills it. Uh, that deals two damage to this, uh, which kills it, but I attack you back. Oh, no, it doesn't kill it. No, I've got three health. So they don't do anything to each other? No, this kills you, because it's got... There are two exhausted units on the battlefield. Three. So get, yeah. So I get uh, three attack. So that's dead. Uh, 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 and that's it. So, you're okay. ready. Uh, three units in your discard pile this turn. So you get to deal a damage to something. Uh, one on lane three. Okay. Pop. And then you draw cards. Yep. How many cards now in your deck? <laughs> Two. Two cards in your deck. Okay, right. My go. 
Okay, so. <laughs> Interesting. Can I, can I do this? I think I might be able to. No, don't. I don't think I can. Don't think I can. I think I'm just short. Um, so, yeah, let's play Overwhelm as a ritual and exhaust your Chilling Freak. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't want him attacking. Um, I will then play my Sisterhood Matriarch. Oh, that your, flaming your lover, Which is going to exhaust your... So that's in lane three. That exhaust your inexorable recruiter. Uh, She's zealous. She is, isn't she? Yeah, zealous, fierce. Oh, dear. Angry, nice dress. Glowy hands. <laughs> um, now, that recruiter is quite tough. But it's in defence. So it just means I'm not going to get through to that. Uh, let's put the Untangled Cell Sword as an attacker in lane one. And that will do for me. So, attacks. Yeah. I have an attack here, forcing you to lose the top card of your deck. Yep. And then I have an attack here, uh, which means I kill this. Yeah, I kill the Collector's Mentor. And you get two crystals. Okay. Because you really need them. Yeah, I really Done. don't. So my card's ready. Um, at the end so of my one, turn, I get to one deal card one damage. In my day. <laughs> one damage to the Sanctuary, so I'm going to deal a damage to the Vault of the Collectors. Um, I can then return the Sisterhood Matriarch to my hand. And that's me done. I will draw Please two get... cards. I need to get rid of that sanctuary now, which allows you to get the card back in your hand. That's the one which yeah, is killing that's me. That's insane. It's insanely good. So, you get two crystals. You now have seven. So, I can discard an acolyte from my hand to deal one damage to any sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can deploy a unit from my discard pile to a lane different to this one at no cost. Yeah. <sighs> You're running out of cards, aren't you? Uh, one card in my deck. One card in your deck? Yeah. Oh dear. That's a unit there, isn't it? Okay, okay, what Genesis abilities have I got? Just so you know, I'm doing my victory dance just under the table. <laughs> it might be too early because I don't know what you've got in hand, but. There's, there's that one. And that one. Problem is, you're just going to do them in. Yeah, this, this Patriarch is awesome. It, it's very good for a cost of one crystal. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to play uh, Okay, there is there is that isn't there Hmm Just looking at what cards you've got left in your in your deck in your hand. <laughs> There's not much is there uh no. <laughs> okay. So let's let's think this through. Okay. Uh, 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 two seconds. So I'm definitely going to do that one, and I want to do that one. To do that one, okay. 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 You got a plan? I think so. I'm going to play. I've got loads of crystals, haven't I? The Legions of Alisman. 
from your discard pile? Uh, yes. Okay. So it comes into play, and as it comes into play, you can pay two crystals, and if you do, deploy any unit from your discard pile. Okay. So where's that coming into play? It's going to come into play in defense of lane one. It can't be lane one, can it? Uh, oh no, that's been done well. The, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, defensive lane four, I'll do. Yeah, so I've spent you two crystals, you get another one. Yeah. Which is going to be Ravenous Horde. Yep, yeah. Ravenous Horde. And where's that going to go? Defense. That can go anywhere. A defense of lane one. Yep, yeah. and that has an ability of each enemy unit on this lane takes damage equal to the number of units in your discard pile. Loads. You loads. Three, four, five. The, un the untangled cell sword has veil. Nine, ten, so you can't kill that, but you can kill the hand of Vatep. Yes, please. Vatep or Vatep, I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Anything uh, else from your discard pile? Uh, don't want to do... Oh, hello. Uh, let me discard a... The still at the beginning of my well, beginning of my turn. It is, yeah. Vault of the Collectors. Discard an acolyte to do one damage to a sanctuary. Okay. What are you discarding? The Collector's Mentor. Collector's Mentor is discarded to deal a damage to the sanctuary in lane three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And and then. Oh, this is so close, but no. Uh, I'm then playing the Glacier Warlord. Yeah, for two crystals. Yeah. Oh, a Zealous. Over the top of my champion. Oh, okay. Over the top of your champion. So your champion is destroyed and removed yeah. from the game. Yeah. It's not very nice. I know. But it activates uh, units from its flanks. Yeah, so that activates that. Oh, clever combo here. My chill fella. Yeah. I then... Ooh. It's close, isn't it? I'm going one card shy, I think. Damn it. Yeah, yeah wow. and then playing, I'm now playing the... Uh, no, no, okay. I'm playing the Ravenous Horde. Yeah. Which I've got in my hand. Two lane three. Why didn't you do that first? Attack. Why didn't you do the Ravenous Horde first? Because then you would have activated when you played the Glacial Warlord doesn't matter anywhere i don't think oh okay, okay. so which each end yeah yeah so this Lots. dies yeah but i think you'd have won if you'd have played it and activated it unless you have another way of activating it no because i can't do two damage to your sanctuary this with the ravenous horde that well no what yeah done that first so it's yeah. so it's active yeah yeah i think if you'd have played that first and then activated both of them. Then when you played the Glacial Warlord, it would have activated both of those. Yeah. And I think that's a win. It's a crazy win. I think that is a crazy win, but that's why you were thinking about it. That's Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I was just trying to think, because I had to do like six cards. Yeah. So when we go to your attack phase, this attacks me for two. And then this attacks me for one for each unit in your discard pile, which I assume is at least six. Wow, well, it's tons. And then we tons. have a win. Well Five, done. Six. Wow, geez, that's really hard to work out. I really thought I had that one, but yeah, you, you're right. You had to sit and work that out. Uh, and for those people watching, please bear in mind, neither of us have played these decks before. We had a quick look at them this afternoon, but we haven't played them. So that's why there was quite a lot of thinking time with having to work yes. out how the decks work. And you, you just proved that that was a, that was like a, a, it was a bit of a logic puzzle, wasn't it? It was. I had to try work out. I had to get the correct ones out of the discard pile twice. Oh, I had to use yeah. the one which allowed me to get two out. So the one which did one itself. So I could put one in that lane. Yeah. I can see yeah. why that deck is a tricky one to play because it requires putting things in your discard pile, getting certain ones out at the right time. But it's <laughs> very clever in the way that it works. I like this one as well. This one is this one is nice. I like the exhausting of the units. Um and this one was tricky to play as well. So there we go. Yeah, we, we, are, one card left. we are done. So all of the games tonight took us about an hour. But as I said just a minute ago, we were learning 
learning these decks as we went. I'm sure that playtime would come down the more you played. I mean, I've seen people playing, uh, you know, other card games like this where they're just playing so fast. Mm. Anybody watching wouldn't have the faintest idea. We were live streaming it, so we were kind of talking things through. Yeah, um, and I'd tell you go. every card I did and all that. Yeah. So which is your favourite deck out of the three that you've played tonight? I think that one's too scary, that one I just played. Yeah, okay. A bit too much thinking. <laughs> right to the wire, as much as it gets. Um, I'm not sure, really. They're all different in their own way. It depends on how you, what you want to feel like playing, I guess. I think that's, that's the good yeah. thing about it. I mean, I've played more Mole Run twice because we played it this afternoon and I've played it again. It's not my style to go very unaggressive. But I'm more comfortable with that deck because it's easier to play. So if you if you do get the game, definitely start by playing uh, Molran and Fanon. I think they are the easiest ones. Ganto was interesting, and it looked like 75% of the way through the game, I was going to absolutely waltz it. Yeah. Because all of but then I played that card, and that card <laughs> that card lost me that game. I'm going to take that card out and rip it up. No, the card itself is a good card. But against other decks, certainly against the Crass deck, I should not have played that card. Mm. Antar was clever. I would probably like playing Antar. I think my favourite one would probably be Wool. I, I like the cleverness. I don't know if I'd be able to play it properly, but I like the cleverness and the combos of the way that that does. I love decks with combos, to yeah. be honest. Both yeah. of them, both that one and the Crass, both played really nice combos that you can just play off each other. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Well, thank you very hurts. much for joining me tonight. Yeah, our brains hurt. We've done, we've done a lot. But I hope uh, I hope that stream was useful. So for everybody who's watching live, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, thank you very much for joining in the chat and keeping us going. Uh, and thank you to everybody who's watching this afterwards, because this video is going to be live now. The Kickstarter campaign runs for another 21 days after today. So hopefully there will be some more people watching this video, because um, I think this might be the first gameplay video that's out there and of course a lot of people have seen the kickstarter have seen some information about it but haven't actually seen it being played so yeah thank you very much for watching i hope you found this uh, this useful um if you have any questions about the game the best place is rather than ask me i mean i'll i'll happily try to answer them but the kickstarter campaign is probably the best place uh, to answer them um and yeah we've proved that this game works over skype so rick if you wanted to play this again at some point mm. we can now that we're all living at home. Yeah, now, now that you've got some printed out decks and I've got some printed out decks, we could maybe play some of the other ones against each other. Um, yeah. And obviously they've, they're, they're going to unlock the stretch goals, which, um, which will allow you to start constructing your own decks. Personally, deck construction is not one of my strong points. I'm more than happy playing pre-constructed decks uh, again. What about you? Would you do deck construction, Rick? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I quite, I quite like the character that the decks have got. Yeah. And I think they'd lose that a little bit if you obviously had mixed up undead with true look different things. I like them being sort of color coded and having the the yeah. character that they've got. But um, again, I think it'd be hard to do because they they work. They synergize so well together. How they've been created, they've been crafted yeah. Yeah. to try and stick in some random things to allow you to move one. Although it might be good. Yeah, I I, I think I, I think that I'm, I think maybe just sneak a couple of cards in that allow you to move that just don't combo with anything else, that, that just give you that flexibility. But I thought that was going to be a problem in our first game. I really did. I thought, once you've played something, it's then it's then useless. But it's not. And there was actually, in games, in, in the other games that we played today, there wasn't a time where I desperately wanted to move a unit from one place to another, except as a defensive measure. Mm. Well, how the other deck works is if you, if you move, you get bonuses. Exactly. Well. So you, you'd lose that. You'd lose that. So you want to be jumping around everywhere. Yeah. Right. We're done. We've taken up enough of everybody's time. Again, thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you very much uh, to the publisher for asking me to create these videos. And uh, yeah, if if you bite the game, then when it comes out, I hope you enjoy it a lot. And as I say, if you've got any questions for me, let me know. I will say good night now. Thank you, Rick, for joining in. Thank you. And I Thanks will see so you all in a future stream. Cheers, all. Good night. Bye.
Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.